Hello, welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome one and all. It is Sunday. It is time for more Hammer Sunday. Yes, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Now it's a little bit cold today, so I've got me I've got my shirt on, so you'll see shirt sleeves. I know it's weird. It's not normal for me. Anyway, never mind, let's crack on. So yes, welcome, welcome. It's Warhammer Sunday. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's that time of the week when I get a sore a, a froggy throat and my nose runs every five seconds. And I crack on with some more hammer. Now, before we get going, as always, a uh, quick big fat shout out to all the people that make my content and my channel entirely possible. First and foremost, my patrons and my YouTube channel members, the people that pay my wages and mean I can do this for a living. Uh, my patrons at patreon.com slash model making guru, the address there. Uh, and my channel members who became members by pressing the join button underneath any one of my videos. All those people uh, really wonderfully support me every month and they make it possible for this channel to exist. So big thank you to them. And of course, to my corporate supporters, uh, emodels.co.uk. And hello, I've got a text message. Could this be dad saying something's not working? Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, dad. <laughs> he says the pre-roll's brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, sorry, yes, emodels.co.uk and goblingaming.co.uk uh, your one-stop shops for all your model making and tabletop gaming needs links in the description below the video use them uh, if you need to pick up some stuff it tells them that i sent you if you use those links and i get some income from that so big thank you to them as well <clears throat> sore throat already fluffy froggy throat swig of coffee uh, there we go yeah so it's a little bit cold today so i've got my shirt on i've got to tell you this shirt it's like a it's like a proper old 1990s it's i realized today i've had this shirt for 30 years it's a proper old lumberjacky type cotton thick so it's just it's a proper comfy shirt. it's dead nice i've had it and it's, it's in perfect condition it's not frayed it's not worn it's a proper like lumberjacky shirt i love it and i've had it for 30 years i realized yesterday i'm like oh god i've had this shirt for 30 years and somehow it just about still fits hello <clears throat> sorry i've got the froggy throat already so yeah so let's crack on now very quickly what did you think of the pre-roll did you like the pre-roll i thought i'd i'd um i'd repurpose the pre-roll i'm doing for the e-models night build for the warhammer sunday one i thought i'll give it a five minute instead of 15 minutes a bit quicker but i thought you might enjoy it i thought you might like it so let me know what you think looks a bit more kick-ass i think i do i will miss the, the canadia theme tune but i don't know i think think a little bit of kick-assness is required now what i might do is change the quote at the end of the pre-roll every week if i remember so keep your eyes open there'll be proper quotes but i might change that round <clears throat> wow froggy throat already swig of coffee again sorry about this nom, nom, nom. so let's crack on if you remember uh, i am building the space marine part of the prophecy of the wolf um, box set that was a limited edition release uh, about a million years ago uh, i bought the space marine side of it uh, simon reynolds our good friend simon reynolds who's won the golden demon award twice have to say that uh, he bought the set and i bought the space marine half of him he had all the orcs <clears throat> so uh, i've got the space marine ones and as such i've been slowly working my way through getting them all built up because i'm going to build myself a space marine my army will include space marines and it will include space wolves because i want space wolves i don't want ultramarines they're nonsense they're for poncy types that nobody wants ultramarines ultramarines is like eh, really no no i want space wolves uh, so i've been working my way through them slowly i'm going slowly and i'm building them carefully because these were once looked upon and breathed on by a twice winning golden demon winner so i have to treat them with respect because how many people can say that their space marines were potentially drooled on by accident or contain hand jam from a golden demon winner not many people so i'm gonna i'm treasuring this and building them really slowly so we're going to we're going to slowly build those up when we've got these done i've got some uh, of the new uh, style space marine bikes that uh, luke from black Mar black rifle model works very kindly sent me and i've also got the um battle set start collecting space wolves but not the start collecting it's the combat patrol or whatever they call it i don't know anyway let's have a quick look and see who is in chat uh we have uh, mayhem model works and william rayborn and raging modeler who are the first three in saying fluff high and woof there you go uh dan Kramer's is in as well it's the gnu guru i'll say that again it's the gnu guru review coming right at you i don't know where this came why why is everybody talking about gnus and canoes and i don't know where this has come from uh so dan kramer's in welcome dan wendy hickson of course and scaly models dad is one of your mods you'll notice two things uh, the mods are the ones with blue spanners 
your moderators like uh, Dad at Scaly Models and Colin at Festi 67's Workshop. They're wonderful mods. They'll keep you safe. They'll keep you secure. If you cross them, they'll feed you to the trolls and they'll burn you alive while they're doing it. So don't cross them, but they will keep you safe and secure. And people with funny coloured names and little symbols next to them, they are my channel members. They've clicked the join button. So if you want that and get some little cool, unique emojis, you click the join button. Uh, that's Colin at Festa 67's workshop. We have Scale Model Muse is in, and we have, who else do we have? Uh, Foxtrot Oscar says, afternoon all. Welcome, Foxtrot Oscar. Uh, Sarah Jane, I'm here with Cakes and Drinkies. This is correct. Making models, bugger, wrong channel. Hi, all. There's Carl. Hi, Carl. How you doing, right? I'll say that again. How are you doing, mate? My words just kind of fell over then. Nice to see you, Carl. Uh, Dad asks the most important question without any prompting from me. I have to say, he's getting very good at this now. He says, so what's on your bench and what's in your belly? Yes, what's on your bench? What are you working on? What's your current build? Could be a model, could be a drawing, could be a diamond art. You could be putting up shelves. You could be doing building a shed. I don't know. What is it you're constructively doing at the moment? And what's on your belly? What are you having for your dinner? Or what have you had for your dinner? Uh, Nim Cinderin is in. Welcome, Nim. Uh, we have... Who else has come in? Anybody new after that? I think that's everybody so far. Oh, no, Andy B67 is in. Hi, Fox. Welcome, Andy. Phil East is in as well. Uh, welcome, Phil. I think that's uh, everybody. Nim says, I just spilt tea on me. Thankfully, it wasn't very warm. It's almost like, I just spilt tea, spilt tea on me. And then she stops talking because she doesn't want to say what she just spilt tea on. If you're a northerner, when you say me, it means my. So that's like you say, I've just spilt tea on me. And then you don't want to say what after that. Anyway, that wasn't really funny when I spoke it out loud. It was funny in my head. Um, let's have a quick look at the bench and belly. Uh, where are we? Wendy Hickson says, bench, little bits of plastic and metal bits. Belly, nothing yet. A raging model of bench, orc death dread and orc pain boy ready for priming, orc war boss at Lax Asarak, the rich, belly a slice of leftover pizza from last night, eat more. Raging modeler says excellent pre-roll, thank you very much. Yeah, dad sent me a text saying pre-roll was brilliant, thank you very much. Uh, he's building target practice for my orcs, says the raging modeler. <laughs> no. I'm getting the people ready together that are going to kick your orcs ass. This is... Uh, la, 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 la. Where are we? Space it jumped. Space puppies. Says scale model muse. Maybe infuse them with this golden demon essence. This is what I mean. I've got to build them carefully and treat them with respect. I said to Simon, I said, I'm building them really respectfully because you may have breathed on these. Your hand jam. You may have handled the sprue with your with your paws and got your hand jam and essence all over the plastic. So I have to I have to build them respectably so I can say these have been handled and moistened by the fair hand of a golden demon winner. I can say that now. Look, how many people can say that? That, you know, my models include the DNA of someone that's won a golden demon twice. He hates when I say that, but I keep saying it. He's golden demon winner twice. Um, uh, I was going to say something. What was I going to say? I can't remember now. Uh, uh, Philly, stuff to do in all long time now. See? Yes, thank you. Welcome to see you. I'm getting good, says Scaly Models. I'm like a sneaky ninja. None of them realise I'm here, says Phil East. Yeah, well, I know you're there. No, 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 no. Uh, if, oh, yes, I have a quick shout out, by the way. Uh, if you weren't watching uh, Colin and Dave's stream earlier on, I'm just going to shuffle my cutting mat across. If you didn't watch uh, Colin and Dave's stream earlier on, the, the Sunday brunch, always from half 12 to uh, just before three on a Sunday, there were a few milestones hit. A few people got a nice little chunk of um, their subscriber hits. Um, totally Scale Models got to a thousand subscribers. Uh, some other folks got to, you know, a thousand subscribers or to a hundred subscribers. So there's a lot of lot of subscriber love going on there. Uh, and I, during that show, got my last, what was it, four or five subscribers to get to 25,000 subscribers. So I have to say... Big massive thank you to all my subscribers for getting me to 25k. Bizarrely, it's been like an, about two years since I hit 20,000, and it's taken about two years to get to that because I've not done a lot of content in the last two years, so in a while to get that far. So I do have to do a massive, massive thank you to all my 25,000 subscribers, 25,002, I think now. Big massive thank you to them. In years gone by, I would have done some sort of giveaway, 
um, to celebrate it. But in current days, I can't do anything. I can't post anything. So I can't really do anything as a giveaway. But massive, massive thank you to my 25,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd get that far. Never thought I'd get to 10,000. But there you go. So big thank you to everyone. And a thank you to all the you know support I got in Colin's chat. So, yeah, make sure you do watch Colin's stream on a Sunday. Vesta 67's workshop. It's him. Dave over at Model Maker Dave's workshop. They do their Sunday show. And it's great fun. So make Dad and Scaly Models and Festa, please put lots of links in the chat for your stuff. Make sure you're pimping your own chisel in my chat, please. Please do. <sighs> uh, Raging Modeler. I found the use of me humorous as also being a northerner. Yes. It's almost like, Nim, you, you, you stopped short of saying what you spilt the tea on out of decency's sake. It, it kind of doesn't make sense when you explain it. Uh, Philly says, Belly is leftover pizza and Bench is a random collection of stuff I for some reason refuse to finish. Uh, Max McGinn, uh, just finished building 20 Primaris Incursors and 10 Infiltrators for my Raven Guard army. Awesome. Kick-ass. Uh, yes, Colin says, it was a good one. Got a few folks to their milestones today. Super happy, but miss Carl making models in my chat. Boohoo and Wibblekins. <laughs> oh, dear. And also, you, to make it even worse, Colin, not only did you miss Carl making models in your chat, you also just spelled his name wrong. You called him Kral. So, thanks to Kral at making models. Oh, dear. <laughs> it gets worse, doesn't it? Ah. Lee Stevenson's in says, Hey all, welcome Lee. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, Scale Model Muse opens a package and says, Ooh, more decal solution to spill. Uh, Muse opens second package. Ooh, Warhammery dudes. Good girl. Hi Fox says, Graham McRobert, welcome, welcome. Phil Bolton. Ooh, Phil Bolton has become an instruction page turner. He has become a channel member. Phil Bolton, massive, massive thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Welcome to being a member. You now get a little symbol next to your name. There you go. See, it says there. Look. It says there. Uh, he's got a little thing next to his name and he gets a small selection of emoji. If you do, uh, when you do emoji, um, you do it. Yeah, I'm trying to remember how you do it. When you do emoji, Phil. Just do a colon and then start typing fox and it'll give you some little emojis you can do. I've only got a few on there, but I will at some point do more. Don't panic. Thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it. Bill Bolton is trying to find a quiet seat in the back, but that big green line there, you can see it there. Kind of, yeah, that's not helping, is it? Uh, Nim says, Bench is my Dungeons and Dragons shield maiden slash human fighter. Belly will be some sloppy joes. Ooh, yes. Uh, Mayhem has missed a lot. Sigh, so there's daily models putting some of the icons in. Uh, for, unfortunately, though, my little foxy heads don't really work well in tiny scale. They all just kind of look the same. So, yes. Uh, and Colin and Dad are putting links up to their channels. So there you go. Make sure to like and subscribe to those channels. Get their numbers up. Get their numbers up. But yes, massive thank you to all my subscribers. I'm incredibly lucky to have that many subscribers. We're on our way to 100,000 and then a million and then 10 million and then PewDiePie, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you, bro. I'm coming for you. Well, I'm not because he makes mindless pap and I try to make good content. But anyway, let's crack on. There we go. So a massive thank you to Phil for becoming an member. Right, we're going to crack on. Uh, I did uh, do my little stream on Friday night, midnight Friday with Colin, uh, during which I managed to stick on like two bolters to two dudes or something because we just had a laugh for like three hours, four hours. And yeah, I just got nothing done and it's totally Colin's fault. So I'm going to crack on and continue building the dudes. We'll put them over there out of the way, bring them back as we need them. So I think I've got all the dudes built now, uh, at least with arms and weapons. My favorite one so far is this dude who is in the process of getting his uh, bolt pistol out of its holster. He's like, oh! Because he's, he's obviously got to reload, but because he's a trained military dude, he knows that when you run out of ammo in one weapon, if for speed, you quickly switch to your sidearm, but at least continue firing for a few seconds. So he's there and he's reaching for his, reaching for his bolt pistol. Which I like that. I was tempted to make one of the other dudes do the same, but I thought having it twice in the same group of people would be a bit weird. But I've got a spare set, so I might have to have some fun with some of the other dudes I've got. So where are we up to in the instructions we have? Uh, let's have a look. Bench's various tower and a little weapon frame for all the magnetised option parts, says Lee Stevenson. Jolly good. Uh, JS Ido says, hello, and how is everyone on this fine day? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Lee's got belly is grilled cheese. Grilled cheese on something, or is it just like a pile of cheese on a plate? <laughs> just a pile of grilled cheese. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm assuming it's on something. Um, uh, making model says bench. I am recording video games and editing. Belly was am smidge. Am smidge. What's am smidge? 
Also, what video games are you recording? Tell me. Tell me. Talk to me about video games. Um, I'm jesting, making models through tears of sadness. Lol says Colin. <laughs> I'm back with food, steak, eggs, and cabbage. Says William Rayborn. I now need steak, eggs, and cabbage. God damn it. Uh, and I think that's everybody up to date in chat. Yeah, so we work on Prophecy of the Wolf. So. Simon kept all the orcs. I got all the space marines. And for some reason, Ragnar Blackmane, right, the, the head of the Blackmane uh, chapter house of the great house of Ragnar Blackmane, looks kick-ass here and meaty and manly. On this, he looks like a sort of grumpy teenager. He looks a bit, uh, don't like it. I want to listen to... Well, listen to Smiths while I'm fighting. No, oh, it looks a bit, looks a bit gothy and depressing there. I don't know. It's not as impressive in paint form. Right. So we've done all the dudes. I think we've done that one. We've done both of those. There's everybody now has got a weapon. They're all just missing heads and accessories. So I suspect we'll get these done today. So he says that, and then he probably won't. So we've got that bit done. Where's my pen of ticking? So next we now have to apply many, many heads and the backpacks and the pointy bits and the accessories. And that's kind of it. So, okay, so what it does, basically what it does is for the sergeant and for the, where's page one? Yeah, for the, for the sergeant and the other guy, it gives you specific instructions. And then for everybody else, it just says, yeah, just build them. Just build them and stick things on them. Just do it. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to build them and stick things on them. We're going to do heads and that. Now, I would prefer, of course, ideally, I want them all to have helmets, because if I can get out of painting actual heads and faces, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. All the same. But I don't know how many I've got, so we'll have a look and see. I've got to do one, two, three, two, uh, five, six, seven, Eight. There we go. Yeah, so we've got the sergeant and we've got the comms dude. It gives you specific instructions to build them. They're fully done. The sergeant and the comms dude with his with his pit boy. And we've got Ragnar Blackman done, so I've got to get six, seven, eight, eight heads. <coughs> Let's start with eight heads. I need my flippy flappy lenses. Don't forget, of course, folks, um, if you are watching this, uh, you want to come and join the live chat because that's where all the cool kids hang out. Uh, I do have my flippy flappy lenses on now, so I can't see the chat very easily. It's out of focus. If you are watching this and you're in the live chat, if you want to catch my attention, please do interact with me. Give me stuff to talk about. Uh, just put do either. At, uh, I'll start that again to get my attention so I can see you've made a comment. Either put your comment in big fat capital letters so it stands out a bit in chat. Uh, or if you want to, you can uh, simply do at model making guru and it'll put an orange thing around my name. So I see it. Or if you want to, again, you can, if you want to, really want to, do a, a super chat, which is the little dollar symbol at the bottom of the chat window. Just click on that, and that will uh, put your comment in a box, and there's no way I can possibly miss it there. So if you want to, you don't have to, but it'd be really great if you are. You are supporting the channel when you do that, so that would be beautiful if you did. Thank you very much. Uh, if you are watching this, though, and you can't see where the live chat is, you need to make sure you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, so if you're watching it embedded somewhere else, just click the YouTube icon in the bottom right hand corner. And that will take you to the YouTube page where you can watch with the live chat. I'm not seeing lots of heads with. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. 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 Give me more. I want more. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yes. Oh, thank God for that. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, yeah, I've got ten. I'm going to get a lot of spare heads in this set. The beauty of it is because you can build them as either incursors or the other one that I can't remember what they're called, confabulators or something. Incursors or divas, incursors or infiltrators, that's it. I build them as infiltrators. You get a lot of duplicate stuff, like you get all these like knives, these double knives. These are for the incursors, not for the infiltrators. So, and I've got loads of spare heads because if I use two, three, four, if I use five, six, seven, eight of these helmeted heads, I do then have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have 12 heads left over. These are like partly masked. They've got half masks, so the heads are sticking out. So I have like 12, 11, 12, 13, 14 spare heads, which is kind of awesome. I do like that. 
I'm going to give them all helmets because I really can't be bothered painting faces. Well, not that I can't be bothered. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm, I don't mind painting faces, but I'd much rather paint helmets because it's easier. Three, four. Five. Oops, come back, you. Come back now. Five. Where did I put the other ones? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But these guys do seem to have helmets anyway, which seems to be their thing. Uh, uh, except the ones that don't have helmets. Thanks, Games Workshop. Oh no, they do all seem to have helmets. Yes, this is acceptable. Often one who doesn't have a helmet. Oh, he's a sergeant. That's all right then. Okay, so I'm not actually being illegal. They all actually do have helmets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't mind painting the faces. It's just when I've got a lot of things. Because once I've finished these guys and I've got like, I'll have ten, these 10 guys. I'll have another 10 over there. About 15 more guys to paint. I'm going to have about 30 or 40 of these guys to paint. So, yeah, painting faces, it takes a lot of time. So I'd rather not have to do that for the rank and file too much. I will do it at some point, but if I've got the option, I'd rather not. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Eight. Lovely. Right. Quick look at chat. I have the same on my tower in helmets. I don't like the blue faces, says Lee. Yeah. The extra bits are for the carpet monster. Muse is popping bubble wrap. Sorry I missed the crash on Sat Carl. I've been all over the show this week. The crash on. Oh, I see. I've got you. Uh, Common Road Junction is in. Welcome, Common Road Junction. Sweet coffee before we get going. No. Sarah Jane is busy looking for a model kit I want. You have quite a few in your stash. I have to say that. Uh, Ostriv Alpha 4 has just been released. I'm recording a new video to show it. What's Ostriv Alpha 4? I've never heard of that. I don't know what that is. Ostriv Alpha 4. Ostriv. Anyway, move on. Let's do some head job. Let's do some head cleaning. That sounds rude. I need another container of something. Uh, where I need a I need a containulation device. There it is. Head containment device. Yes. So let us continue with our shenanigans. We'll get all these accessories done. We might get all this done today. Hopefully I'll be on camera for most of it. But yes, I mean if I was just building this one squad, I might take the I mean it does show them with helmets on anyway, to be fair to me. But if I was going to do the paint, the faces, most of them are just the faces are covered and it's just the top of the heads that stick out. But oops. Um, if I was just building a squad of 10, I might take the time. But if I've got like, you know, I've got like another 15, 20 of these to do. So. And I will eventually get some old style. Oh, man. Roman man just stuff everywhere today. I get some old style space wolves as well. So. I'll end up just painting them all in one go and that'd be millions of them. I don't mind painting faces. I'm just not, I'm not the best at it. I have to say though, I have to say though, it, did anybody watch? It's not that I like to speak ill of other people, but did anybody watch the latest or one of the latest videos in Games Workshop's uh, Warhammer TV channel? It's not called Warhammer TV anymore. I can hear a noise. What's that noise? I thought it was mains hum coming through my speakers, but it's something outside. But yeah, um, one of the latest episodes where Nick Baton paints some fancy ultramarine, I think. Yeah, Nick Baton has a thing for ultramarines. I don't know why, they're just pathetic. But he, he, all he ever does is paint ultramarines. Anyway, he's painting some ultramarine character. Boring. And he shows painting the face. And he gets all most of the way through and he, he only really uses contrast paint but the face looks really good he does wonderful skin tones and he does some some sort of five o'clock shadow on it and i'm sat there thinking this looks really good just using contrast paints that's really good look i like that looks mini really simple to paint so i'm kind of studying it to learn how to use it so i can try and use that method and then he says and now let's paint the eyes and i'm thinking 
Oh, this is going to go one of two ways. Because more often than... There's no there's no mode line on these. That's why they're good. More often than not on Warhammer TV, whether it was Duncan or Peachy, they never used to show painting the eyes because it's, it's, it's an acquired skill and most people can't do it very well. And a lot of the time, it doesn't always come out looking good, especially when you're trying to do it on camera. And I thought, well, this could be interesting. He's going to paint the eyes. That kind of a ballsy move. So bear in mind, he's done this wonderful job on the skin. The face looks great. It looks kind of pallid and it's got five o'clock shot. I'm thinking this is a good looking face. I'm going to steal all these methods. And then he paints the eyes. Dear Lord, what a mess. It just, it did not go well. Now, of course, he doesn't say anything because he's, but he's, he kind of goes, let's paint this eye. <laughs> well, he, uh, he seemed to paint the, perp the pupil first, but didn't mention that. Because there's like a black spot in the middle. I'm like, why is there a... And then he says, we're going to paint the white around either side of the pupil. And it came out in the end with eyes like wonky eyes. And I'm like, oh God, it's got wonky eyes. And the, they go outside the eyelids. And oh, it's gone. It did not go well. And it kind of ruined the whole thing. Because up until that point, it was a really good looking figure. It looked really nice. And the face was fantastic. And then he painted the eyes and ruined it. And that's one reason why I will never try and paint eyes. Ever on this kind of scale figure because a because I can't, uh, but b because ninety nine percent of the time it's just not worth it. It comes out looking bish. Now it's a bit different when you've got something like an orc or a squig or an alien where it's got a single colour for the eye. Like the eye might just be a glow, like a glowing blue, or it might be a red if it's just, if it's an orc or something. That's fine. I can paint them, but it's when it's an actual eye with an eyeball. And an iris and a pupil, it's like, no, no. I don't. And, you know, I can do eye lenses on like space marines. But actual eyes and pupils, I just don't do it. And if ever you've been, if ever one of the things that's put you off doing little figures like these is the eyes, the simplest solution is don't. Because what I've often found, or what I've always found, is that, um, I need to be in a different tin. What I've always found is pretty much when you're painting one a little sort of this heroic scale figure, but it's a normal face, for example, when you've done your skin tones, you do a sort of brown wash or a, a, a sort of dark flesh color wash to put some definition to the to the skin to give it some depth. That normally shades in the eye socket. And then when you look at it from a distance, because it's small enough, that actually looks convincing enough without painting in the eye. Because if you go and look at photographs, if you walk out into the street at some point and just look at people walking along the street or just look at some photographs of people. Whenever you look at a photograph of someone taken in good daylight and they're not looking directly at the camera, like it, just people sitting around on a, on a park bench or something, or there's a photograph of a, a street and there's people walking around. The one thing you notice as you look at the people is you don't see every single eyeball and pupil and uh, ret uh, retina. <laughs> I'd be worried if you could see the retina. You don't see every eyeball and iris and pupil on all those people in the photograph or walking down the street. You might see a couple of people where they might have like a wide eyed expression because they're laughing or something or doing something. But for the most people, you don't actually see the eye. You just see the shadow where the eye, where the brow overhangs the eye socket. And it just, you know, there's an eye there. You know, there's an eye in that little depth dark bit. But for the most of it, you never see it. Go and look at some old photographs of like, you know, soldiers in World War Two. And I don't mean close up shop. I mean, like pictures of some something happening and there's people in the landscape when they're not close. up. You don't always see the eyes. So just having shadow in the eye socket on a figure is often enough to make it look convincing. Because if keep in mind as well, if you're if you're making models for display, then it's going to be in a cabinet and probably going to be at least a foot away from it. If you're making models for the tabletop to play, people are going to be at least three feet from it. They're not going to get that close. If you're making a model to sell, well, that's a whole different story. Then maybe you want to be able to do that because then you can charge more because they've got awesome looking eyes. But for this kind of thing, especially if you're going to put them on the tabletop, you don't need to worry about it. Human eyes, you just don't, don't stress. A lot, I know a lot of people that have been put off doing figures purely because of eyes it's like don't you don't even need to do it because 
99.999% of the time, if you try and paint eyes, they'll come up looking like garbage. And they'll come out like wonky like that, or you'll just have a white bit with a black dot, which is not realistic anyway. It, it's just not worth it. I mean, yes, there are people that can paint realistic eyes on these little tiny heads. I've seen people paint realistic eyes with pupils and, you know, every irises and everything. And it's like, it's insane. But you're never going to see it. There's, there's very little return for all that effort. Unless, of course, you're doing it as a professional. But even if you, if you, you know, go to Warhammer World and look at all the stuff, or even just look at some of the box art, you don't always see painted eyes. And that's why, you know, people don't always paint painted eyes. Because it's better sometimes to have a suggestion of an eye socket than it has is to have accidental googly eyes on a serious figure. It just doesn't work. So don't stress if the one big thing is if every time you paint a figure it looks good till you do the eyes, don't do the eyes. Literally, I mean if I'm doing a, if I'm doing a bog standard human, I'm using the the formula, the simple formula for skin. It's like Bugman's glow, then a wash of Reichland flesh shade, then some uh, Cadian flesh tone, then a highlight of Kisler flesh, and then maybe a highlight of whatever the next one is after that one that I've forgotten. But that that Reichland flesh shade over the Bugman's glow leaves those eye sockets shaded it's just enough to say there's an eye socket here and a lot of times when you look at like warhammer figures don't forget it's a shouty bloke he's in a he's in the turret of a tank going Wah! waving his sword around he's shouting his mouth's agape and his eyes are kind of scrunched up anyway so a lot of times the figures actually have scrunched up eyes you wouldn't see anything so don't sweat it if that's what's been putting your figures just don't do it just leave it with the shade in the recess and you'll find to your amazement it looks pretty good i don't actually do i actually have a figure i can show you uh i can't get to i can't get to the figure i've got a dude in the top of my lehman russ who's just got the shade in his eye sockets but it looks fine it looks fine have a look on my on my facebook or anywhere on my website anywhere else like the lehman russ that i did uh the hello kitty lehman russ or look at the um the e-models build from Christmas before last, the, the, the Matilda style uh, chibi tank, that's got a Warhammer dude in it. No painting of the eyes, just a shade. <sighs> but there are people that can paint them amazing, and I envy that, but I can't. Uh, where are we up to? Box thinking equals danger. Uh, Tea is better, says Common Road Junction, but clearly Common Road Junction is wrong because coffee is far, far superior to tea. As I've just demonstrated by the hearty swig of coffee. Uh, where are we? Uh, Bobbins 9000 is in. George is in. Hey, George. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, welcome. George, I think I still have a shed load of Xeon stickers, uh, 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 decals. I don't know if I have enough for a lot of Space Marines, but I'll have a look. I think it might be if you want Xeon uh, Space Marines. Or something else. Whichever you prefer. I haven't got enough to do dragons though. George knows what I'm talking about. I've got a shed. I've got. I haven't had a chance to check. But I think I've got quite a lot. But I might not have enough for like 40 space marines. I don't know. For the little decals. But I can get more if I need to. So. If you want Xeon we can do Xeon. Or if you want an official chapter of something else we can do that. I meant to get back to you and I forgot. Uh, Cy Reynolds is in. Yeah, look, I'm taking great care making these. These have got your body moisture all over them, and I'm treasuring it. Welcome, Cy. See, it's also because I mentioned you, and I mentioned you more than once, and you turned up. Cy Reynolds says hi, folks. He's won a golden demon twice. You know. He hates me saying that, but it's true. Cyberg says mayhem. Uh, no, no, no. Scale model muse. Archie's in. Welcome, Archie. How you doing, my friend? Uh. Colin, was that a trouser trump I heard on your show or a spider pig? Um, and yes, Cy Fox thinking and the alarm, alarm bells. I mean, alarm lights. <clears throat> George Gable says the more you force yourself to do it, the better you get at it. This is true. If you know, if you if, if you can't do eyes very well, but I'm not saying don't do eyes ever. You should always try and better your skills. George is right, of course. The more you try and do something, the better you will get at it. Uh, I just don't, I'm just lazy. I, I, just, I don't bother. But it, it depends what you what you intend your painting to be. 
if you intend it to be <clears throat> tabletop only <clears throat> you've got a bit of an out there because you, you're never going to see them that close up of course if you're doing like a character if you're doing like reboot gulliman or something doing the eyes might be a good idea if you can but george is right keep that in mind as well the more you do something the better you will get at it uh, where are we up to um I've tried eyes and it's not easy and it's a faff and 14 halves, says the Reggie modeler. Absolutely. Uh, a faff and 14 halves, so, and Simon Reynolds says, so eight faffs. Richard Gray seems pretty good at eyes. I don't know who that is. I probably should. People are talking about dad doing a big trump in Colin's stream. Oh, yeah. Uh, Edging says, Cy Reynolds, shh, Mr. Lord and Saviour. Uh, painting eyes. I avoid painting eyes because it reminds me of that cursed video called Thin Your Paint, says Max McGinn. Yeah, there's a. If you go and look up uh, on 1D4 chan th about Thin Your Paints, there's a video on YouTube called Thin Your Paints, and it's basically pictures of people that have done terrible paint jobs <laughs> on their Warhammer minis. Um, yeah, but there's also a selection of terribly painted minis on the 1D4 chan page about thinning your paints. I've got loads of them stored as little pictures to put in Facebook chats every now and then. But there are some. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not the worst thing when you see a badly painted mini that's got badly painted eyes. But like, like with Nick Baton on the Warhammer TV video, the face on that mini looked fantastic. It was really good looking. It was really simple paint job and it looked fantastic until he painted the eyes because then they just, it just balked it. It was a beautifully painted face with googly eyes, and it was like you've just ruined it, mate. You shouldn't have. You shouldn't have shown that. You should just not have even bothered to try and do it. I mean, painting eyes when you're just painting for yourself and you can get really close with a fine brush is one thing. Painting eyes when you're on camera and you've got a brush that big because he's trying to paint fine detail with a artificial layer brush, which is like a tree trunk. Yeah, it's, it was never going to end well. Hell, I was watching Duncan last night painting the the. Uh, Got a mold line on there. I was watching Duncan last night painting a Slanesh guy, a Slanesh character, and even he didn't bother painting the eyes. He's like, Yeah, we're just going to put a bit of dark brown paint in there. There you go, done. Even Duncan knows sometimes. I don't think I actually ever saw Duncan paint eyes. Well, maybe I don't know, not like on human sized figure eyes. I know he painted eyes on like he did eye lenses on armor and he did eyes on monsters, but. Like when it's an orc and it's just you're painting the eye red or you know it's a single color that's that's okay but it's, it's an eyeball Oof. i know my limits i know my limits if i do it enough i would get better at it but i just yeah so i want to move on to, i get bored too quickly to actually sit there and try it but george is right the more you do it the better you get <coughs> Uh, Ian's car says hello a very bored Adam here welcome Adam don't be bored we'll make you not bored um, Cy Reynolds is saying he's okay big hugs to Cy everybody give Simon lots of big hugs he's been poorly sick at the end of last year so everybody give Cy lots of big hugs um, nice to see you Captain Squig there's mayhem to Cy hello hello this is Cy Reynolds he's still saying hello to everyone <laughs> yeah See what happens when you go away for a few for a little while. When you come back, you're just saying hello all the time. So on the bench, painting a prime. I'll say that again in English. So on the bench, painting a primaris captain in gravis armor, and for dinner, meatballs with mushroom and ricotta, full pasta. Oh yes. Speedy Q8 in. Hello, hello. Speedy Q8. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Thank you. There you go. Done. Uh, no worries. I thought it might be cool to add to the Imperial Knight armies. You know what? Wait there. Wait there. Go nowhere. Don't go anywhere. Check now. I brought down. Hang on. Box. Hang on. I'm checking now for you. Let's have a look and see. If you don't know what this is, wait a minute. Let me get my Crusader case out. Right. Let's have a look and see. When I did the Warhammer Conquest, it was a half and half between me and George. Um, 
And basically, we're going to split it so that George um, gets all the Space Marine stuff and I keep all the Death Guard. Uh, and what I have here, I did a few um, Space Marines with Xeon markings. And what George says was, he was like, because I said, how do you want these Space Marines painted? Because if you think I'm going to paint them like Ultramarines, you can just GTFO. I will never paint an Ultramarine. Um, so, he was debating whether to have them painted like Xeon. But I just need to make sure I've got lots and lots of little Xeon decals to put on the pauldrons of Space Marines. I have various different colours. I think they may be the right size too. Uh, there's some there. There. A bit big loads i think i've got enough they might be they might be a bit mix and match they might be some have yellow markings and some have uh i've got loads mate they might not all have white zeon symbols they might have like a mixture of yellow and white but we can come up with a, a, a head cannon reason for that and i can always get more if i need them so one two three four five five ten fifteen yeah i think we should be all right i think zeon might work Plus, it's painting them as green. I like painting green anyway. So if you want them as Xeon, my friend, you can have them as Xeon. Uh, or we can do them whatever you want. Whatever you want them to be. I haven't got any dragons decals there, so not enough of those. So I couldn't do a load of Shanghai dragons. So anyway, yes, we're, we're trying to decide what he wants the Space Marines painted as. Because he doesn't want Ultramarines because he's a man of taste. And not a simpleton. So, uh, so if you want Xeon, I clearly have many Xeon decals. Because it's mostly Space Marines anyway. The only thing I'm going to have a problem with is any of the figures where they've got Ultramarine symbols moulded into them. I'm going to have to carve that off and that's going to be a right pain in the backside. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll figure it out. Uh, right, where are we? I should put this all away again. One second, folks. One second. <laughs> There we go. It's not often that Crusader case. I need to get another one. It's full. I've got a Crusader case and I've got like about four skirmish boxes and they're all full of just stuff I need to paint. Mostly Warhammer Conquest, let's be perfectly honest here. I think I've got all the Warhammer Conquest Space Marines in like one Conquest box, in one Crusader uh, skirmish box and all the Death Guard in another or something, I think. Uh, if you really want to practice eyes, just practice on the endless amount of spare heads you get on sprues these days. Don't risk a model you've spent ages on. Good advice from Cy Reynolds, though, who's won a Golden Demon twice and knows what he's talking about. Uh, I've tried eyes once or twice. Aren't doing it unless the model's face was larger in scale. Yeah, a lot of the times, though, when you get a dude with a face, he's usually shouting in Warhammer. And when he's shouting, his eyes are kind of squinted anyway. So it's just like a little line. So a little dark wash or even just the normal shade you've put on there for the flesh is more than enough. A Space Marine helmet uh, lenses are easier. Absolute lenses and stuff are fine. White and then red or white and green or white and blue. There, no problem. It's painting an eye. It's because you've got to line up the dots and the eyes. And if you just do white with a black dot, it looks terrible. Okay. Uh, Reynolds, many feels occurring. There you go, as long as you keep it quiet. Don't turn the microphone on, we'll be all right. Uh, let's have a look. How's things? Phil East. Timothy Calaco says, holy crap, I'm late. Just a bit. Good morning. I hope you brought a note from your mum. Uh, but it's World War Aircraft. Talking, talking. Timothy, please stay behind after the class. So yeah, George, if you want Xeon Space Marines, I may not be able to match exactly the colour of the Marines you've already got because I've forgotten what colours I used. But there'll be shades of green, obviously, with red eyes, because they'll be painted like um, Zaku's, I suspect. Or, it, well, here we have a choice. Okay, I hope you're still in the chat, George, because you have a choice now. Would you want the Space Marines painted like Zaku green shades? Or would you want them perhaps painted in goof blue shades? Ah, you see, there's a choice, you see. Have a think, you think about that. <coughs> Or perhaps we have the different types of space marine. Some are green, some are light blue. Goofs and Zakus. Ah, you see. Right. Uh, where are we? So we're putting on the Ritz. Why paint mini sticky googly eyes? Oh, yes. 
Timothy Clarko says, I bought the Indomitus box the other night and was looking at all the plastic and got lost in the awesomeness. There's something about... I mean, this is just... This is literally 10 dudes and a, and a leader, and it's like four huge... It's great. And there's loads of spare stuff. I've got 15 spare heads in this, and arms and all kinds of stuff. It's the reason that Games Workshop stuff is plastic crack, because it's just great. Put me watch back on now. It's like right now, I'm actually overflowing in sprues because I've got all the spare. When I finish the um, the Orc Was, was Bomber Daka Bomber Daka Jet thing, I've got all the sprues left over from that because I've got me, I've got another one to do that's an eBay rescue for Tabletop Trauma Center. So I don't want to put all the sprues away from the other one because I might want to use some of the bits from the kit to put on the eBay rescue. I've got all the sprues from that. I've got all the sprues left over from an Imperial Knight that I made ages ago. It's now sitting in George's cabinet. Every time you get so much leftover stuff with Games Workshop kits, it's not a case of you finish your kit and you've got a few greebles to put in the box. You finish your kit and you've got like five sprues of stuff. I really am running out of space. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to throw any of it away. Because it's all good things. Like I've got half a box of Imperial Knight parts from my first Imperial Knight that I didn't use. And I've got all the Imperial Knight parts when I finish the Canis Rex that I'm not going to use. And I've still got an Imperial Knight's Renegade set with two Knights and a Senior in it. And I haven't even touched that yet. I'm going to be pretty good for Imperial Knight parts. <clears throat> now, I am liking the fact that there's no massive mould lines down the middle of these Space Marine heads. Other than on the bottom bit here. Normally, you've got so much cleanup to do. They pulled a blinder on this one, though. So yes, George, if you want, <clears throat> hang on, let me clear my throat. Oh, coughing like a high court judge. Yes, George, if you want Xeon dudes, we can do Xeon dudes. For the Xeon Space Marines Army, can have a black Tri-Stars, Goofs as veterans and Char Red for captain. Possibly. Well, I've already... George has already got um, some of my stuff. He's got my my Zaku Imperial Knight, and he's got my when I did that Imperial Knight Zaku. You've seen the picture of it. I painted it like a Zaku, but I also did a retinue of a squad of ten intercessors uh, that were also painted in Zaku greens, and that was going to be you know for my army. But because I, I was going to do a Principality of Zeon army, but I kind of got bored of the idea after a while, so my army won't be that now. But um. So he's got the knight and ten space marines, you see, in green, so we can stick with the Xeon theme. That'd be cool. And I need to get on with that, painting that at some point. Because it's something like 40 space marines and vehicles and all kinds of bits and bobs. I haven't yet built, and I will admit this freely, I have not yet even built the space marines on motorbikes, because it's the old space marines on motorbikes. And I'm just putting that off as long as possible, I'll be really honest. <laughs> mm. By now, you see, George would have had all that because he paid. He paid, put money towards the the conquest set, and we were going to split it. And then, you know, the world caught fire, and I've not been able to do anything with them and because I've not been able to post them. Of course, I've not even got them done yet. So, painted. So, I did start filming the painting process, start following the magazine, but I decided to forget that because it was just garbage. The paint jobs would have been basic, and George wanted. Pacific chapter anyway, so there was no point me painting them all as ultramarines when they were going to go to George. My idea originally was just to follow the magazine and show people how to do it. But I thought no, because I don't want to paint ultramarines. Don't be like Nick Baton. Paint your space marines something other than ultramarine. Couldn't believe when he when he did those eyes on that figure there. It was like, oh dear lord, that was it was a great looking face till you completely screwed it up with the eyes. And it's the kind of thing where it, it bothers me on an extra level as well. It's not just it bothers me on the oh god you've screwed it up level, but it also bothers me on the I make videos how to paint I make painting tutorial videos. Because I sit there and think, God, imagine if that was me filming that and I'd done that and I'd be like with the brush, I'd be like, oh, 
screwed it up. I've got to do another take, but I can't do another take because I, I can't, I can't unpaint what I've painted. And I'd be like, it ruined the whole process. I'd be like, if I've done, a, if I'm doing a painting video, and I mess something up, it ruins the whole project. Luckily, it's never actually really happened yet, but I would imagine it'd be like, because I can't, I can't stop and unpaint what I've painted. That's the one downside of doing painting tutorials. You've got to get it right, because if you mess it up, you either have to say to people, I'm teaching you how to do something, but I've just messed this up, and that's it, it's ruined. Or you have to stop, strip it, and repaint it, and start again, and then get back to the point where you were, and film the bit again. It's like, it's not, it's not something that I would relish. So part of me cringes because it went wrong, but part of me cringes from the, the production point of view of, there's nothing he could do at that point. He can't stop and restart. He can't stop and paint the figure again. I mean, he could have done. But at the same time, while he's presenting to camera and doing it, he can't acknowledge that it's gone wrong on camera. He can't sit there and go, oh, crap, I've just messed it up. He has to just carry on smiling as if nothing's happened. It's like the old thing of working with animals, you know. Stand and look at the camera and talk and smile, even though the dog's humping your leg. Just carry on talking to camera and smiling. Just, you know, as if nothing's happening. So I just, I felt, I felt bad for him in a way. I was like, oh. I'm pretty certain he'd know, he knew what he'd done. Right, that's that one. I've got war. That's all of them. Yay! Uh, Zion Space Army. Black Tristars, Goofs, and so on, says Max. Uh, when I eventually had the idea of doing a Xeon Space Army, a Xeon Imperial Army, I ran a little competition to come up with ideas for colour schemes, and the winner was the, the Xeon idea. We'd like some dudes painted as... I was going to have, like, the Imperial Guard were going to be placed painted as Tristars in those colours. The Tempesta Scions were going to be painted in red and white, like Char, and then... and so on and so on. Space Marines were going to be painted like Zaku's, but I kind of got bored of the idea after a while. I kind of faded away from it. Uh, la, la, la. I've returned from the kitchen bearing a platter of noms that I've cooked myself. Am I an adult now? Depends. Is it just noodles from a packet? In which case, yes. Zaku Green is a stock colour from Vallejo called Zeon Green. Ah. And then make a colour range. Well, I, I, I think I used... Uh, it was a mixture of like Lauren Forest Green and some other greens. I'd have to, I can't remember the exact colours I used on the Space Marine. So, uh, but I think George may have not be watching now because he seems to have fallen out of chat. He's not in chat anymore. Unless I'm, I'm on live chat. Well, I shall send him a message later. Citadel's technical soul stone. So, mm, wow, that wasn't even words. Citadel's technical soul stone blue, spirit stone red, and waystone stone green over and light silver in the lenses. Absolutely. Yep. Yep, just literally silver or white, and then one of the clear colours. Done. I, I can't do the painting the colour with the little highlight and the little white dot. I can't, I'm not skilled enough to do that. It never looks good. I barely was able to paint a searchlight on a tank. I need to practice that. From tabletop distance, you can't see the eyes anyway. Exactly what I was saying earlier on. Uh, Nim says, no, it's a couple of sloppy joes on potato rolls and some steak fries. I have no idea what a sloppy joe is or a potato roll. Is a sloppy joe like a chilli dog? Is it like a chilli a chili dog with loads of chilli mince and stuff? I don't know what a potato roll is. Is that like a roll that's just that shape? I don't... You need to put pictures. You know what? You know you need to put pictures in the boom pot. You need to do. Right, heads. Heads, I win. Tails, you lose. Uh, we shall apply some head action. I won't say that again. Now, are any of these veteran heads? Before I start gluing them, any of these look like veteran marking? Oh, well, they all got little studs on them. Uh, meh. One's got studs. I don't think it really matters. But I know the ones with studs are like a bit more veteran-y. Then again, these are all just 10 dudes. They're not like different ranks, are they? So. Uh, I don't really matter. I think they're all just kind of the same. Let's just glue some things together. Right. I don't know why I picked up the glue and then the dad device. I mean, I could have just picked up the... Oh, shut up. I don't, I'll, I'll just stop talking now.
Right, so these are bog standard space marine heads. I'm not going to bother about painting them on sticks. I'll just get them on. Not hard to paint them. Is it true? I always like to have them looking at different angles. Some variations. This one is looking. He's got his rifle held up. Normally means he's looking to the side, you would think. And I could have him looking like that. But he's not actually. There's a big seam line on that. Hang on, hang on. Let me deal with this mold line. How very dare you. He's not actually aiming the gun, he's just holding the gun up. He's not shooting anything, so if I've been looking that way, it looks a bit weird. I think he does need to be looking that way just because he's maybe holding the gun up out the way so he can see things with his looking eyes. I'll have that one there. One thing you never want to do is just have them all looking straight ahead because that's just boring. I don't want them all looking to the right though. <laughs> You think, don't have them all looking the same way. That's also a bit weird. Okay, that's that one. This guy is kind of lunging forward with his gun down, so he could be looking. It, the only thing is, it looks weird if you have them looking up. They look weird if they're looking up. It just doesn't work because the the way the neck's designed. You very rarely have them looking up in the air. They're just kind of looking around. Have him looking to the other side. I'm limited as to where I can put his head because of all the bits sticking out. Quite cool if he's kind of looking all the way to the side. Although his, his arm is actually getting in the way, so. But it makes some visual sense if he's lunging forward, but it looks like he's kind of squatting a little bit. But he's looking over there. There we go. Maybe you can see all that. I'm on camera and everything. Next is the guy who's re reloading his weapon. I think he needs to be looking over there like that. That just seems to work perfectly to me. He's, he's kind of going to go with his weapon and pull it out. He's going to whip his weapon out. Matron, matron, I say. Oh, think of the children. He needs to be looking all the way over there. He's in the middle of the process of getting medieval on someone's ass. Okay. He's shooting over there. He's emptied his clip and now he's going for his sidearm. Oh dear, there's a big gap in his, oh dear, big gap in his belt there that the glue didn't fill. Mm, I'll have to fix that later. Bit of sprue goo. Floppy Joes are minced meat in a barbecue ketchup sauce with peppers diced up in it. Potato rolls are hamburger buns made from potato flour and steak fries are just thick. Well, not steak fries, are thick cut fries. Oh, I need all of that. And I posted a picture for you all. Good girl. Darn it, you're making me hungry, Nim. This is what she does so well. Every time. It's like Nim and Frankie when they post up pictures of their foods. It's just like, oh. Well, both of them. Oh, you knew. Right, now this guy. I want somebody looking down, maybe not looking up all the time. What the other guy's going to be doing? It's when you get two figures the same and they've got the same pose and you're like, well, where do I put the... Now there's another one there with his weapon up. These two are the same. Oh no, they've got different poses. So I think this one... I mean, most people don't give this much thought, I reckon, to, to where they're actually putting the heads, but I do. Everyone has a story. This guy's looking down at something on the ground. He's going, what the hell is this down here? I don't know why he talks like Arnie. He's going, I can't believe I just stood in that. Or something, I don't know. I don't know what he's yeah, that'd be good. Put his head on the wrong way around, Fox, you spoon. I might have one just looking forward. Because I suppose you can have one looking. Uh, probably, you know, you can have at least one person just gormlessly looking forward. 
he's probably got an earwear I mean he's trying to work it out of his head he's like he's walking along and he's got a Spanish flea going through his brain and he's like oh no 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 bit of a daydreamer so I think you need to allow at least one looking forward this one I think he's looking over there just slightly to the side most people just plonk the heads on but I like to have some little bit of character to them a little bit to the side for them. this guy looks like he's holding up his rifle he's going hey get out of the way like someone's just zipped past him and he's moving his rifle up out of the way so I can't have him looking there because if, if I have him looking to the left, he's just kind of staring at his rifle, which makes no sense. So for this guy, really, he has to be looking to the side. What's the other guy doing? The other guy, I forgot what I've done him now. The other guy's also looking over there to the side. But his weapon's up higher. Quite good that I've got the same dude and I managed to get the weapons in different positions. There's a great big mold line right down there. Good God, Fox, what are you doing on that Friday night when you're... I'm going to laugh with with their fester. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. See what you made me do, Carl? All these mold lines I didn't sand. Ew, I stepped in squig poop. That's more like one of these, isn't it? Ew, I just put my foot in that. In fact, let's have, yeah, let's have him looking. <laughs> I'm going to have him looking down to the right. Like he has just stepped in some squig poop or something. Although ideally he'd have like one foot up in the air, but and he's not even looking down, he's just kind of looking. It doesn't really work either way, whichever way you put his head. Like why is he walking that way but looking this way and holding his rifle up there? It doesn't really make any sense for this one. I put his rifle up too high. That's not a position you would actually have. He needs to be shooting something, doesn't he? I think he actually needs to be shooting something, this one. I hate it because I was now looking at his rifle and not Oh well, too late now. He's, he's actually looking right to the side. Because I've made a goof there. I've actually put his rifle. That's just too high. Rifle. It works on him because it's lower down like he's holding it out of the way. For him, it's just too high. So he can only be shooting it. Oh well, never mind. Can't go back. Uh, the phrase Sloppy Joe's makes me think of something very nice and tasty, dirty and messy, but you cannot eat it. Just, yeah, I... I Shut up. I know what you're talking about. And you're just filthy, dirty little bugger. Uh, what are up to? Food. I just had homemade chocolate sponge cake, says Mayhem. Ooh. You can have Sloppy Joe's pizza. Ooh. Uh, do you think the kit would be worth selling? Not sure if there's a market for them, says Phillies. What are we talking about? I've missed a conversation here. Middle East, what was that about? Graham McRobert. I've missed something somewhere, haven't I? Oh, Sag Reynolds says, potato roll, potato flour, bread roll, Mr. Fox, they are brilliant for burgers and such. I shall have to investigate. Candy Graham from Mongoose says, greetings everyone. It's great to see Sag Reynolds and George Gabriel's name in here again. Welcome, Candy Graham. Although I think George uh, only popped in briefly because he seems to have gone again. Underdog's in, welcome underdog. Uh, I don't know what people are talking about kit worth selling. I must have missed that. It's too late now. I can't go back. I just finished some leftover smoked brisket. I've got no food in front of me at all. Although for dinner tonight, we've got some uh, chicken steaks. Breaded chicken steaks. We'll be having them with the chips. The simple chips and beans or chips and macaroni cheese, perhaps. I do not know yet. Do you know the name Goof is supposed to be pronounced Galf? Could be. I'd have to go back and watch. Well, even then, I can't go back and watch like the British translation or the English translation of Mobile Suit Gundam because it's translated, it's, they might not pronounce it right. Goof, Galf. Uh, Underdog's just painted his Lumineth Realm Lords, ready for his live tomorrow. Cool. Jolly good. Make sure you pimp your stream, dude. Uh, right, so we've got the heads on. And now it's the dreaded time. It's not the wolf time, I'm afraid. It's, it's, it's the backpack time. Oh, yeah. This is where Cy Reynolds screams and runs away now. 
Because you think I'm a slow builder. Just give Cy Reynolds a backpack and see how long it takes him. I bet you, you could, you could, you could navigate the Amazon River there and back again by the time you finish doing a backpack. Tell us all about it, Cy. Tell them what it's like. Four. Five. Why am I doing this? I could have done the pauldrons and saved myself a lot of stress, but I've gone straight into the backpacks. I'm an idiot. What can I say? Six. I don't get any spare backpacks, unfortunately. Six. Seven. Acht. Nine's in. That's his stick. In fact, I might do the. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be such a coward. I'm going to do the pauldrons first. <laughs> I'm going to ease myself in. Oi, easy bit, says Cy Reynolds. It takes as long as it takes, he says. You're the one that's told us it takes you. You hate doing them and it takes you forever. You told us that. I'm not I'm not casting any aspersions or nothing. No one out, no nothing either. Uh, Paul Dronium's 52s is what we want. Let's do that easy stuff first then, shall we? <laughs> because I'm not an idiot. 52. Paul Dron, one knob, easily removed. There you go. Long cutters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whee! For some reason, I find sticking pauldrons on these figures immensely satisfying. I don't know why. I don't know why it is, it just is. I just like, oh yeah, pauldrons get in. Yes, love it. I think it's because the nubs are so easy to clean off and they always come out looking good and it's very satisfying when something doesn't just go to crap instantly. So many things can instantly go to crap in this hobby. And it's pauldrons. They put the sprue gates in dumb spots on backpacks. Yes, they do. Uh, all the sass, says Mayhem, and Cy Reynolds says all day, every day. Absolutely. If I don't get sass from Cy Reynolds, I want to know why. I'm, I'm, there's something not right. I'm like king of the, I'm like the weasel king because I can I can get out of doing anything. Cy Reynolds is like the sass king. Would you be sass queen? I don't know. I don't know which would be more relevant for sass. Is it kingly or queenly? I don't quite know. Would you want to be Cy? Do you want to be the queen of sass or the king of sass? Queen sounds like a better fit for sass, but I'm sure you can get a sassy king as well. Because men can do sass just as much as ladies. I'll just shut up now, because I'm just talking rubbish. I'm the king of weasels and also the prince of just talking absolute nonsense. Anyone can talk the back legs off a donkey. Only I can get it, convince it to get up and walk off again. Yeah, so nubs on pauldrons. Here's a guide. Done. This is as simple as it is. It's not hard at all. That's why I like doing pauldrons. They're just great. Little shave. Little gentle sand. I could do pauldrons all day. It doesn't harm that the GW plastic is so pleasant to trim when you're trimming nubs off in certain places. Defile for that. It doesn't do any harm that plastic is pleasant to trim and cut it really does help i thought i might as well do these just before i dive into the backpacks like a little chaser a little pleasant fun bit before i go into all the backpacks yes they wouldn't be so bad actually the space moon backpacks if it wasn't for a little Greebles down the side. That's the bit that I hate. Trying to get the mold line from all the little sticky out greebles on the side is a pain. But at the end of the day, you end up with a space marine. So it's kind of a plus. <coughs> no, <clears throat> no, you're King Cheese, says Mayhem. <clears throat> Only when I'm playing a video game, I'm I'm Cheese King.
because is sass really a ladies thing because if you if you're a bloke then you're sassy aren't you just a punk isn't sass from a bloke doesn't that just make you a punk <laughs> i don't know i don't know what the, i don't know what the words are i don't know if a man can be sassy or if he's just being a punk We have some weird conversations on this show. Anyway, I hope everyone is okay. How is everyone? I hope you're all doing okay. <clears throat> I need to clear my throat. There we go. Uh, updates. What news have I got? Uh, had planned on filming the next or the final part of the Lehman Russ Tabletop Trauma Center Rescue this week. Totally haven't had a chance. Um, for various reasons, I did the first. I've not got that number off yet. I did the first e models, um, Canis Rex build stream on Friday. I'll be doing that on Fridays now instead of my three o'clock all out Friday stream for the next few weeks. Instead of that, uh, I'll be doing my uh, e models Canis Rex Imperial Knight build stream on their channel. Now, I'm not going to be painting it anytime soon. Not just yet, because I'm waiting for them to get a refresh of stock from Games Workshop. Because there's no point in me painting this thing in a load of paints they haven't got in stock. Now we're going to use this paint that they haven't got in stock, and this thing that they haven't got in stock. They're waiting for a restock, but because the world being on fire, they've had trouble getting stock from Games Workshop. So, for obvious reasons. So, uh, I'm hoping that as soon as they can get more stock in, and also perhaps get the kit back in stock, because it's out of stock now. Um then i'll paint it but uh, what i can do is get it built up in advance anyway uh, and i can live stream that for them so there's some content for them uh i'm basically just a bitch says Cy reynolds yeah but we love you do -do 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 -do. timothy wanted to order a few more dark angels upgrades for the boys do it um uh, still don't know what phil east and graham are talking about I'm a little disappointed that they moulded the shoulder pauldrons on the Marines in Indomitus, says Timothy. Yeah, with those like those kind of box sets, one of the things they seem to do at the minute is aim those box sets at beginners. Which oh, are these pauldrons go on now? They're all on this arm, aren't they? They seem to aim them at the beginners, so you tend to get the easy build kits in the box sets, which is all right, but it's not as much. For me, who hates building, I actually enjoy building Games Workshop stuff. So I actually enjoy building the figures. So when it's a easy build, you can't mess it up kind of figure. How is that? Hang on. Kind of. Hang on. I've got an intruder in my glue. Yeah, it's alive. Not really. It's just some glue schmutz. It's off. Yeah. So much as I'm not a builder, I do enjoy building games workshop stuff and i actually really enjoy building the figures quite a lot so when they do just give you the easy build like monopose figures it's a bit of like a oh, well i would have enjoyed more but those those sets are really about introducing someone to the game and to the building they're kind of aimed at the person who hasn't really got like 400 space marines they're like an introductory thing so they want to get people in building quickly and then playing the game you see that's where you get all the game stuff with it <clears throat> same with the dark imperium and all that kind of stuff they kind of i think was it dark imperium the first one where they did that but then of course you have the trickle down thing that you eventually then end up with a lot of the actual figures just being easy builds which is a shame i mean you've still got lots of non-easy build ones which is good There's plenty out there. Well, I suppose if it, it's also a way to keep the price down. If they had the more complicated 5,000 options for each figure, they'd have to charge more for that box set. And as the point is to get people into the game and the hobby that haven't been into it before, yeah, I suppose I can see why they want to try and keep them as cheap as possible. I mean, I'm just, this is just me guessing. I don't know. I'm just guessing. I'm just making the assumption. It's a way of keeping the box because it's not a cheap box set. Those those little sort of sets never are, but 
it's a way of keeping it not too expensive. And I suppose as well, if any of the figures in that set are the kind of figures that are never going to come out anywhere else, because they do that from every now and then, they have like unique figures that aren't. If it's just like 10 intercessors and a unique character, then, you know, but if it's like 10 unique intercessors that you never see again, like these, these infiltrators and incursors, I don't think you can buy these infiltrators and incursors anywhere else. They were just in this set, the Prophecy of the Wolf set, I think. But these aren't easy build, so I don't quite understand. I don't know, I'm just making it up. I'm just guessing, I'm just guessing now. I know nothing about these things. Yes, and I am putting them on the right way around. I'm just double checking. Quite nicely. Nicely. Uh, Festa six seven says guns. If you didn't watch our stream on Friday. At one point, Colin's building the Baneblade. And he's putting all the guns in the world on it. Every single gun in the kit is going on his Baneblade. And at one point, he held up a heavy stubber. And he said, look at it. Now, I didn't recognise what it was because I've not built that specific type of the, the Baneblade. So I didn't know what the, it's the guns that go on the back, the heavy stubbers. So I didn't recognise it. It had like a gun, a shield and everything. I'm like, so what's that? And he went, gun in it. <laughs> and I'm like, I asked for that, didn't I really? I kind of walked into that one. What's that then? It's a gun. He came a little joke throughout the course of the stream. Holding up a gun. What's that? It's a gun, you idiot. <laughs> Guns, in it? Sun's out, gun's out. Uh, oh yes, the stream that was then a new stream for Skyrim. Let's start again. Mayhem model works. Oh yes, the stream that was then a new stream for Skyrim on Saturday that wasn't the wrong stream for key in that. Yes. Jan's car is doing well, staving off lockdown boredom. Yes. Do it. Uh, Sam Reynolds says, I mean, I'm an emo punk goth depending on the day, so I guess it fits. And he says, so you're an emu goth. Or you could be a gunk. Uh, you could be a, a humor goth. Goth, goth, mo, poo, goth, poo. I'll shut up. I just had a thought. Bandai kits made out of Games Workshop plastic. That would be nice. Plastic. You mean plastic that doesn't explode when you put any kind of solvents on it? That'd be fantastic. I think the thing with Bandai plastic is it needs to have a certain strength to it. The reason that Bandai plastic is the way it is is because a lot of their kits have moving parts. They need to make sure it's not too brittle. And I can only assume that in over the time they've decided that the way they create their plastic and they don't bake it, bake in quotes, uh, is the best way to give them flexibility and strength at the same time. Because I guess they need to be able to have parts moving around but not falling apart after five minutes. I don't know if I don't know if GW plastic would suit the bill there. It's certainly soft. I don't know if it'd be flexible enough for moving parts. I don't know. But it is my... I love Bandai stuff. I do. I really do. But my big frustration... And one of the reasons I got a bit burnt out and Gumpler and stopped doing them for a while... I will go back to them. It's purely because I can't just build it and paint it. I have to build it and then stress about what paints I can use and what weathering products I can use. I'd be like, I want to do this particular weathering effect, but I can't because I need to splash thinners everywhere. Oh, yeah, it did get quite annoying. The mould line right down the side of his head. I'll have to clean that later. I will go back and clean these guys up, the mould lines, later on because I've missed a few. It's Colin's fault, pretty much. You can see here I'm going between the thick glue and the thin glue. Thick glue, just so it stays on. Then the extra thin. Just to get into the gap and weld it together. Even better. Whenever you want something to stay where you put it, thick glue. First off. Right, that's them. They can dry while I back do the backpacks. Right, that's all the building done now for this week, folks, because for today, because I've got backpacks to do. It's going to take like an hour. Uh, where are we? 
Uh, I still don't know what Phil East and Graham are talking about. Um, I literally only bought Indomitus for the heroes. I was going toward the new Honored of the Chapter box, which is only 40 US dollars less, but it's a terrible deal compared to Indomitus. I still have, just remembered, Jamie Bone ages ago um, very kindly sent me a lot of the minute the the get the Warhammer Heroes. You remember the blind box stuff you could buy? I've got a box full of them. I need to do it at some point. I must do them. Let's get them done. Now I think they are Ultramarines, and I think they have Ultramarine stuff molded into them. So I may have to go against my word. I'll actually paint those as Ultramarines. Don't really mind too much in that situation because they were a gift. And you know I should paint them as they were them properly so they may be painted as ultramarines uh but i've still not got around to them i need to do that so i've got so many things i haven't built yet uh, about two years ago i promised derek grotowski that i paint motarian because he wanted to know how to paint motarian and I've, I've never got past the primer on it i need to do that as well i've got people that sent me i've got a, i've got a sinanju that i need to paint at some point that somebody sent me master grade sinanju the stuff that people sent me i've still got in the front room i've still got big boxes full of kits that people sent me to give away as prizes but it got to the point where uh for a while it got to the point where i couldn't afford to keep doing that all the time and then obviously lockdown happened so i couldn't do anything anyway yeah, so they will never get built but they will eventually get given away but i can't build them because they were sent to me as gifts for prizes so Festa <laughs> 67 it's got a tit on it I'll sacrifice the monetization. That was the other in joke. It's got a tit on it. You know, like when you get two pieces that go together and there's a little little notch cut out and a tab, like on the barrels on the bottom of a bane blade. What Colin was trying to say was, I was saying, can you, when the barrel goes on, can it go any way around or has it got like a little lock and key to, to have it oriented a certain way? And he went, yeah, no, nah, it's got to go in that way. It's got a tit on it. And I just, my brain was like, did he just say what I think he just said? But everybody in the chat picked up on that. And that became the thing then. Got a tit on it. <laughs> there you go. That's Colin's new phrase. Guts in it. What's that then? It's a gun. Thanks. Glad I asked that question. Right, backpack time. <laughs> I don't mind cleaning up the mold line down these bits. Fairly simple. It's cleaning up the mold line, the little side bits. One day someone will come up with a two part injection molding system that doesn't leave your mold lines. That will be happy times. Literally, clear off the nubs, glue it together. Job's done. Stand back, light your pipe, admire your handiwork. Done. You see this on my own screen? Yes. I'm in focus and stuff, by the way, guys. Do let me know. I've, for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, I noticed the last couple of weeks, although I've not changed my settings at all, my streams seem to be, I don't know, darker and crispier looking. I don't quite know what's going on. And I had the same with Skyrim the other day, uh, last week. The Skyrim was suddenly dark, and I don't quite know what's happened there because it's different setups. But never mind, as long as you can see everything, and it looks okay. Just me being overcritical because I'm the one that sees it every week and I can know how it works. You guys are probably like, it's fine. Uh, so, anyway, yes, so uh, what must I have talked about updates? So, yes, I haven't, didn't get a chance this week to do any of the Lehman Russ. Uh, so, next week, hopefully, the plan is to finish, finish the Lehman Russ, get that final episode painted. Uh, and I still haven't decided what I'm going to do after that yet. I might, I don't know, but I might potentially have a go at Mortarian. I don't know yet because I've changed the way I do filming a little bit, the, the, the physical setup. And I've, I've changed some software and stuff as well. And it might mean, the problem I've always had is painting figures is I can't get close enough to see what I'm painting if I'm filming because I've got to be like this to paint a figure but I can't get the camera near me because all you see is my head I may be able to get around that a little bit 
So I'm, I'm going to try some things. So I might maybe do Mortarium. And I know it's a big figure, but it's still lots of little things like the nurglings and the little details. I've got to be able to. So I'm going to I'm going to practice with some sort of backdrop so I can hold it up with my elbows on the desk and paint it that way with the camera looking sideways. And we'll try some stuff. Try some stuff. We'll see what happens. It's not very easy, but I'm getting used to the new way of filming things where I film a small bit and do voiceover. So that might make it easier. That's my new my, my new uh, my new vibe at the minute. Instead of sitting there talking to camera, and now we're going to paint this bit and blah 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 because I'll do that and I get I get my words wrong five times and I have to redo it. And by the time I get the final take, I'm so angry and frustrated that it shows in the video. So what I'm doing now is simply filming the footage before little snippets of each step, and then I can go and add voiceover later. It speeds up my process no end, and also means I remain happy while I'm doing it. Uh, but it might mean that I can easily more easily film painting figures. We shall see. I'm also not sure how I'm going to paint Mortarian. I was debating whether to do him the classic Death Guard green way, which I really like that, that green, I like rot and rust and degradation. It works really well when you weather it. Or going for more of a bone white look, but then I wasn't sure what I'd do with the wings then. So we shall see. Well, after I basically got him primed. I'll have to strip all that off because it wasn't very good. I'd strip all that off and start again, basically. But I don't know yet. I don't know yet. I don't want to do my Bane Blade. Because I don't want to step on Colin's toes. And Ted hasn't, technically hasn't finished his yet. Uh, I don't want to do my Valkyrie just yet because Colin's going to do his soon. And I've got loads of other stuff I can get on with, so it's not a problem. I do have my Imperial Knights Renegade set. Still to, to do. But I don't want to necessarily be painting an Imperial Knight when I'm also painting an Imperial Knight for E-Models. And there's some other bits and bobs. So I'm not sure yet. I have to go with... The one thing I've learned over the years is there's no point in me filming something where I'm not in the mood to film that thing at that time or paint that thing. If I say this week, um, this month, I'm going to film Kit X, but my brain's like, I don't really want to do that. Then it won't be a good experience for me or the viewer. I'd rather be like, right, what is really wanting me to be painting it right now? What's my brain want me to do? My brain goes, let's paint Mortarian. I'll paint Mortarian. If it says, let's paint Thousand Space Marines, I'll, I'll do that. I doubt it would do. <clears throat> but I do need to get some practice at filming figure painting because I want to be able to paint figures and film it. It's not, it's not that I can't paint the figures. It's the difficulty of filming painting the figures. That's the problem at the minute. That's why you'll very rarely... So far, see me paint an actual figure because I need to get close enough. Now I've got me, now I've got my broken toed brushes, which are fantastic. I've got the confidence to paint figures much better than I have before because I can get real good control over the paint. But it's still filming it. Like when you see, you know, Duncan or uh, Fifty Two Minis or you know whoever Midwinter or whoever painting figures. And they've got a little miniature there and they're painting it like this. They've got a proper camera. They've got a proper SLR recording device that can zoom in from a distance. They can have it like three feet away and it can move in and zoom in. And you still get a crystal clear like 1080p or 4K shot. I'm filming on an iPhone. And even though it's an iPhone, what? Uh, uh, this is the SE, the new one from last year. Got a decent camera on it. But as soon as I try and zoom in, of course, it's digital, so it looks like garbage. So I've got the option. But I'm not about to go out and spend 700 quid on a camera. I don't know anything about cameras. My father was a television cameraman for 40 years, and he used to despair at the fact that I didn't know anything about cameras or how to work them. He tried to explain, like, you know, f-stops and exponent. I didn't know. None of it went in. So when you see like Duncan painting a dude or the guys at Warhammer TV or whatever, and you've got this nice close up shot of your little tiny space marine. He's being painted and he's like, now we're going to paint this. We're going to paint this bit. We're going to paint this here. And they've got the brush and they're painting like this. And they're doing that. The camera's probably about four feet away. And, it, you know, it's, I wasn't even on camera. The camera's probably about four feet away from them and behind them. So they can zoom in on the shot and get a nice clear shot of that. I can't do that. 
Uh, well, at least I couldn't. I'm gonna. I've got some ideas there. Right there we go. One backpack cleaned up. How was that, Simon? Do you take longer than that? Uh, George, I think you should build and paint the Warlord Titan. I think I'd need fifteen hundred quid to buy one, and also resin. No, no, no. Me and resin don't get on. I don't have the engineering skill to reinforce it all. And no, no, no. Oi, did you update to use the phone? Start again. Oi, did you update to use the iPhone SE? Because if so, that's your answer, the higher res camera. Yes, I'm on a... My other filming phone died, so I had no choice but to get myself an iPhone SE, which is there, just purely for filming. I only use it for the camera. And it is a much nicer camera. But it's not got the telephoto zoom that the iPhone 7 I've got. The other phone I've got, there's my actual phone that has a zoom camera on it. So it is a nicer camera. Uh, it's a much higher quality camera. But it's still, if you zoom in, it, it you get that degradation. I don't like digital zoom. Digital zoom is never a good idea on a digital camera. Uh, where are we up to? George Gabriel, I want to get some Games Workshop kits and make it into a Doom 2016 Cyber Demon, says Mayhem. Mortarion is such a cool model, says George. George, I don't know if you hear you disappeared in the chat. I, did you see me getting out all my Xeon decals? I got them all out for you. I think I've got enough Xeon symbols for Xeon dudes for your space marines. Some of them may have white, some of them may have yellow markings. I may need to vary that around a bit. But I think I've got enough Xeon markings for like, you know, 40 space marines, basically. If you want the Xeon space marines, we can have a conversation about that. Right, let's do at least one backpack. Because we've got an hour, we've only got an hour and a half. I want to finish at least one dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 54. In fact, why don't we just get these little bits off the sprues? Uh, I can find them. They are these small pieces. 54 times 10. 54, 54. I really want to use these double knives, but it's for the other guys. Damn it. I might have to give them double knives anyway, just to... I can't, can I? It's not in the, not in the data sheets. Right, these are pretty small, so I can use my nice nippers. Four. Nine. Zvi. Zvi. Yeah. One. Uh. Where's it gone? Them. That's not on there. That's not on there. It's that one there. Yay! One, two, three, four, five. Uh, six, seven, eight. Six. Seven. Aerial time. I dread aerials and things on Games Workshop stuff because they always break. Yes, yeah, so if you want Zeon, dude, we can have Zeon. Uh, I think you should paint. I, I would. I'd say the two things that make put me off a of Warlord Titan is one, I haven't got two grand. Literally, they're like with all the bits. I like it, but also me and big chunks of resin. Just, all the reinforcing is well beyond my abilities. That I'm not. I've not even tried building me tanks yet. I need to build my tanks to see how I get on with Forge Wall Resin first. <laughs> yeah. I will do one day, but, you know, a long time from now. <laughs> yeah. Crazy prices. And don't forget, of course, Warlord Titan, that's the, probably more than two grand. That's probably about three or four grand if you get all the bits combined. I know, like a Warhound Titan can be up like 1,500 quid. So... Warlord Titan, which is like three foot tall or something crazy like that. Be some expensive shizzle right there. When I get a million subs, and I'm getting that kind of money. I could be talking road trips to Forge World to buy a lot of stuff. Till that point, I'll stick with the plastic crack, I think. Right, that one done. Uh, what's chat doing? Ooh, I just thought, why don't you have the goof blue marines as veterans or specialists, Zaku's for grunts, and char red for sergeants? 
an option. Didn't somebody say that earlier on? <clears throat> yes, I was saying, George, um, whether you want them all, if we go for the Zaku look, for the Zaku look, if you go for the Xeon look, whether you want all the Space Marines to be green, Xeon green, um, Zaku green. I'll start again. If we go for the Xeon look, up to you whether you want all the guys to be like Zaku green, like the other ones, uh, or you can have them different colours. I was thinking, because some of the colours are different, some of the, the Xeon decals I've got, you could have like for like he says, green for the grunts, blue for the veterans, red for the sergeants. Or you could have, you know, green for the intercessors, uh, blue, goof blue for the blokes with the jetpacks, the interbreeders or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're called. Interbreeders or something. Inter in, interocitors. All stupid names regardless. Uh, I'll put that on him. Then. Why is that a really shonky fit? What have I got the wrong? The wrong backpack or something, but that's a really shonky fit. Weird. You know, back, <coughs> excuse me, backpacks probably just click into place, don't they? Really snugly fitty. That one's a little bit shonky. Or you could have them as something completely different, George. It's entirely up to you. They're your, they're your space moorings. Hell, if you if you could find some, I could paint them all as absolutely pitch black, vanta black with no details whatsoever, and that'd be they'd be unique. Imagine that. I have made inquiries about getting some of that musu black paint because I had a fun idea, but it's not cheap. Not for your stuff. I mean, just from, I just generally I was thinking about getting some of that musu. You can't get vanta black, unfortunately. Because is Anish Kapoor is the only artist in the world licensed to use it? Because he's an absolute chode who wrangled that. Is this amazing you pay that this artist has managed to make sure that no one else can use? Thanks, chomp. But there's other extra black black paints out there. <clears throat> Mate of mine has a Warhound from Forge World. Holy hell, putting together the toe took him a week. Yeah, the Warlord Titan, the hand, you know, like on an Imperial Knight, you get the slappy hand of bitch slaps. On the Warlord Titan, the hand is about as big as your hand. That's on a Warlord Titan. It's like stupid, crazy nonsense. Uh, Burpage. Panzer Koenig's in. Good afternoon, all. Welcome, Panzer. Oh, that tasted like soba noodles. Chicken teriyaki. Welcome, Panzer. Welcome, welcome. Uh, uh... Uh, if they said it earlier, my bad, I was working, I wasn't listening. I think somebody said it with a similar idea, but not exactly the same. Uh, but think how glorious that thing would look on the shelf. And trust me, a Warlord Titan would just be... I mean, I've got a three and a half foot tall Master Chief, and that's pretty impressive. Well, three foot tall Master Chief, and that's pretty impressive. But a Warlord Titan in the cabinet would just look stontacular. But it does require a mortgage. and knowledge of how to weld steel bars together i could imagine the amount of reinforcing you'd have to do in that they will be insane if it's like bit of resin clunk i'm done but if it's like oh weird uh nim says culture hustle has black 3.0 which absorbs 90 percent of light and they have other colors that may be of interest to you well i've heard i've been re reading about different ones and this musu black i think it's called uh is supposed to be even blacker than that uh, and I found someone in Europe that sells it. It's like 50 quid a bottle. So it's not cheap. But I had a fun idea. I probably won't do it because, you know. But I just had a silly fun idea. Uh, well, that was a nice introduction to chicken teriyaki flavoured. I know, just as you came in. Bleh, just for you, that was. By the pig, says Graham. <laughs> the dark shadows approach, says George Gabriel. Can you imagine that? George is like, can you paint them all in moosey black? Psst, there you go. Your space marines are painted. Done. <laughs> I'd love that and make my life easier. Uh, right, so get another backpack done. What are we on? Twenty to five. Yeah, we can get at least one more backpack done. I think maybe I could be overconfident there. I think in my assessments. Also on camera will be good. That over there. <laughs> do, 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 do. Yes, I need to. I need to assess my. Um, my two Forge World tanks. 
and see what the build experience because i've never had a good experience with resin before well i'm gonna say good i've never had a pleasant experience with resin. remember i'm a painter not a builder so anything that complicates the build more than necessary is, is always like eh for me but like when i built that um space 1999 uh comlock the communicator that i used in the videos for the gags you know where i'm talking to pete mate from e-models that was a resin kit and it was literally three blocks of resin it was a resin block, a smaller resin block, and a resin tube. And even that was stressful to put together. Because it was, it was covered in pits and holes. I had to clean it up and sort it out. So, and other things like my, you know, my death core dude with their arms. But I'm having positive thoughts about those tanks because they look a bit more straightforward. And that will give me some resin chops then. If I, if I, if I enjoy the build of those two tanks... Then it does open the doors to me to in the future more forge world stuff because there's loads of stuff in forge world like just for the astra militarum for your imperial guard that looks really mint some of the tanks and stuff look great death core stuff but i've never been happy working with super glue because i like you know polystyrene glues like this because you can put them together and adjust them and make them fit with super glue you get two pieces done and if you've not lined that up right perfectly the first time, you forget it. You're out. So I don't trust CA glue anyway. But we'll see. If I've got experience with the with the uh, Macarius Vanquisher and the Malkadoran Furnace, which is a very nice gift from George for Chris Secret Santa, I think I will. I'm looking forward to doing them. I might do one of them next. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to doing them because they look mint. And they're only a small part count, so how hard can it be? I know they'll probably need some fettling. There'll be some reshaping to do because they'll be a bit warped. The, the the two cannon on the Macarius Vanquisher, you can see they're not straight. But hey, that's, that's just how resin works. I don't mind that. As long as there's not lots of mould slipping, I have to do lots of green stuff and filling. That's my big worry. But if I have an enjoyable experience with those two, then definitely it will open up potential stuff in the future some of the hybrid kits where it's like based on a lehman ross or a chimera where you get like the plastic lower hull of a tank but then the, the upper hull and the turrets and stuff is all the resin stuff for some of the imperial guard tanks they look mint the gorgon transport looks fantastic but sadly you don't get the dudes to go in it anymore you used to be able to buy dude death core dudes to go in it like like 50 dudes that were in the transport waiting to be transported and you don't get that anymore uh what to just get super 15 kilogram force magnets then pose it in the come at me bro pose no construction needed says george <laughs> yeah you know what i do give me a 15 kilogram pull magnet something's gonna go wrong i'm gonna be stuck to the side of my car or something permanently forever but what happened? Well, I went outside, past, I walked past the car with a magnet, and now I can't. It's in my pocket, and now I'm stuck here for all time. Just bring me food until I die. <laughs> but that's the thing, as a painter, not a builder, I hate saying that all the time, but I do. As a painter, not ideally a builder. Anything more than easy peasy to build is kind of, it kind of removes the fun factor a bit. I do enjoy building Games Workshop stuff because it's fun to build. It's, it's, it goes together nicely. I don't enjoy building Ravel stuff because it's not fun to build and it goes together terribly and I have to do lots of filling and repairing. Oh, but, and you, but you get just an illustrative point. So resin is kind of scary for me i need to ease myself in into not sucking at it but we'll see how it goes like i say, i'm looking forward to those two tanks and like i say if i do enjoy them and i think i will then there may be more forge world goodness in the future the only thing of course is i'm not going to do any resin building on a live stream resin building will be on pre-recorded only Oh, 
I'm keen to get started on that Canis Rex though, because I'm quite surprised there's there's almost no painting tutorials for Canis Rex online put on YouTube at all. Very few. I've, I've, I found like I found some reviews which are just let's look at what's in the box, which is not. I hate that. It's not a review. You can't review something you haven't assembled. You, or it's, it's a what's in the box. It's not. A re I hate people. Oh, I hate when that like, people do that on videos. Let's review this kit. You're not reviewing it. You're looking at things on a sprue. It's you, you can't speak to the quality of the kit, how well it goes together or anything. It's just, oh, it's not a review. It's a, just a. Oh. Anyway, yes, there's a few of those. Going off on a wibble there. Pulling and wibbling. Um, but there's no real painting guides. And even I'm, 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 I'm having thoughts about how I'm going to paint it. Not fully decided yet. I mean, I know how I'm going to paint it to look like Canis Rex. It's got to be silver and red and black. But a lot of the Canis Rex shtick is that it's bare metal. A lot of the armor is like just is, is kind of metal rather than painted a color. Now I know perfectly how to paint it. I, I use the colors correctly. The problem I've got is it's like a gumpla. It's a mixture of you want the painted parts, the red and blacks, to be matte. But you want the shiny metal exposed armor to be shiny, but you don't want the inner frame to be shiny as the armor. The armor's got to have more of a shine to it than the inner frame. So then it's like, okay, well, there's various things I can do, but if I'm showing people how to paint it, I've got to assume that some of them may want to play it on the tabletop. So, for example, I can't use things like C1 Metalizer because you can't, if it's going to be played on the tabletop, it needs to be given a protective varnish coat. But if you put a protective varnish coat on, of course, that kills your metallic finish. Because you want matte varnish on some bits and gloss on. So it's, it's the practicalities of what do I actually want it to look like at the end in such a way that people can play it on the tabletop. And that's the frustrating things with things like, you know, Warhammer TV and, and Duncan's painting guides. They're really good painting guides, but they never tell you what the end bit is. Because if you took any of that Warhammer TV stuff and put it on the tabletop, all the paint would come off within you know days within minutes so it's like you can paint a beautiful shiny metallic gold thing and then you put a matte coat on it and it's just it's just brown so it's quite challenging so i've not quite figured out fully the the painting order like when am i going to varnish this i'm going to varnish that do i need to do the whole thing in a gloss? i mean one option is to do the whole thing all the other parts as gloss so paint them all up as gloss varnish paint them all up gloss varnish it's so the metallic stay shiny and it's protected and then just matte varnish the bits that need to not be shiny either with a matte varnish or if it's not possible to airbrush that on uh, simply apply some lamy and medium as a matting agent over the gloss you've got choices like that you see so not quite figured it out yet but there's not really any guides online on youtube there's hardly any i can't find any how to paint so i'm keen to get it done so that when somebody types in how to paint Canis Rex, of course my videos come up. That's what's going to happen. I'm quite surprised because it's not an old kit. It's only been out about a year or so. Oh, la, 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 la. Someone did a huge central stage set in Vanta Black. The whole crew had to go on a training course on how to move and handle it. <laughs> I think Squidmar has just done a video where he paints with Musu Black. I haven't seen that. I, I wanted to read about it. It was in the, um, I can't remember where I read about it. I read it on some blog post. I'm like, oh, I like the look of that. But I have a specific idea for it. Don't, I don't have an idea for, let's have a look at this paint to see what it does. I have just a specific thing I want to paint with it. Just a stupid fun idea. It's a stupid idea anyway. It's Stuart Semple. Uh, he made a black 2.0 than 3.0 because Anish Kapoor is an expletive. So he made the rule that anyone except Kapoor, anyone linked him. Yeah, basically, Vanta Black, the company, the Vanta Black paint was invented by whatever company. And it was supposed to be at the time the blackest paint in the world. But Anish Kapoor, some artist that most people have never heard of, came along and signed an agreement and made, sorted out an agreement whereby he would use it, but he was the only person allowed to use it. End off. No one else was allowed to use it. No other artist. So all the artists in the world are like, you're an ass. Now we can't use that. So this other guy, Stuart Semple, made his own. 
just said, you know what, I'm going to make a paint that's just as good, doesn't cost as much, and anyone can use it, except Anish Kapoor. Uh, but I think Moosey Black is darker than that, from what I've seen anyway, in red. Moosey Black is pretty dark, hardcore stuff. Now I need to clean up these little side bits, but do I do that now? These came out quite neat and tidy. No, maybe not. I'll glue this on. What we'll do, I'll glue this one on, and then we'll just clean up these little... I've got some rough scratchy bits there, so I need to clean that up with some extra thin. Um, people that will do anything to make something seem like it's popular is just paint. I know someone did a genuine Vanta Black watch face. The central stage panel freaked people out as they stuck it between two massive video walls. As it was a massive contrast, people who saw it said it tripped them out as it didn't look like it could happen. <laughs> Yes, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't make a video about the paint just to make a video about the paint. I mean, it would be, but it wouldn't be. It is all about this paint, because people know what that paint is, the Moosey Black anyway. It's just that I had. A, I woke up one morning and thought, oh, that'd be brilliant. Stupid little idea that wouldn't be worth the £50 it cost me for that paint, but it was just a stupid idea. And I'm like, oh, do you know what? That'd be hilarious. It probably wouldn't. In my mind, having just woken up, it was it was a hilarious idea. Which means it's probably the worst idea ever. But we'll see. I was going to order some last month, but uh, finances suddenly changed at the last minute. So I might see when I get my uh, my next check from the HMRC, my next sole em self employed survival pittance check. I jokingly called Trump Bucks last year. Uh, we'll see. I get myself some. Just for fun. I mean, I know the bandwagon's long gone. I, I wouldn't make a, a film about the paint specifically because yeah, that's, that's been done. But yeah, I was surprised how many film videos that aren't actually on YouTube about Amis Rex that don't just involve an inbox review. <clears throat> Sorry, an inbox show and tell or how to build it. To magnetize it, but nobody's shown how to paint it. Now, I'm not going to paint it nice and neat and tidy, like on the box art. I don't do nice and neat and tidy. Imperial Knights are hundreds or thousands of years old. Now, I know Sir Hector looks after his Imperial Knight because it's the last of its kind and he's the last of his house. But he's going to take care of it, but at the same time, he's not got the same resources that he had when House Cerberan was around. But he's limited in what he can do. So his, his night suit's going to be dirty. It's going to have some wear and tear. I've got some freedom to wear and tear it a bit. It's been in some battles. He's seen some combat. We go. Some of the backpack done. Yes. I'm going to quickly run some extra thin over the scrape a bit. I've got most of the glue off. I'm just going to run it over there just to smooth off any little fluffs that I've got. On the little greebles, you know, like any little fluffy bits of plastic where I've scraped it with the blade just to clean it up. There we go. Lovely. There are literally thousands of videos of people using Musu Blacks as skill mod I'd rather try that liquid mirror paint. Yes, yeah, could do. I say I will be doing it because I want to do a Musu Black. I just had an idea. It was more about the idea. Mm, 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 mm. I would like to try the culture hustle mirror paint. I've not seen that. But the problem with like, even then again, you get things like the, the chrome paints and the mirror paints and stuff. The problem we have then, especially with tabletop miniatures, is what do you do with it once you've painted it? Like if you paint the Space Marine in silver, in this like liquid, in this silvery chrome paint, and it looks mint. Um, and let's say you're able to then paint all the other stuff around it. Let's say you paint, a sil you paint the silver Templar or something. How do you protect it to play it on the tabletop? Because you put a gloss varnish. You obviously can't put a matte varnish over it. Because that would be stupid. But if you put a gloss varnish over it, most reflective like chromes and things don't fare well under a gloss varnish. It changes them. It, it, it dulls them. It's counterintuitive, but it does. It changes the reflective properties. If you get graphite and rub it onto something and you get that nice shiny graphite effect, 
and then you spray a gloss varnish over it, it's just grey. It just changes. I mean, a matte varnish, it makes it even more grey, but even a gloss varnish, it can just make it grey. So, how do you how do you get around that? And if I'm just buying something, if I'm just painting something to sell it, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I have to make it clear to the buyer that it can't be played on the tabletop because its paint won't survive. But that moosey black, you can't really. It doesn't. It doesn't look as black when it's varnished. Or all those other blacks, you know, they're all. If you varnish them with a matte varnish to protect them, it changes their darkness, and they're less black. If I'm painting for display or for to sell it, then it doesn't really matter. I can, I can leave it unprotected. Then you have to say to people, you can't play this on the tabletop because if you handle this model all the time, you're going to take all the paint off. It's not going to end well. But anyway, I just had a silly idea. It's probably not actually if if i do it it's probably not actually gonna be that silly or fun and it won't be anywhere near worth the 50 odd quid it's gonna cost me to get a bottle of the paint it's one of those things that the only place i can find to get it in europe is one of these places where you have to fill out an online invoice and send it to them and they send it to you it's like wow old school Because there's only a few places that sell Mushu Black. I might not even do it. I don't know. It was just an idea. I woke up one morning with this funny idea. Uh, might do it one day. We'll see. We'll see. If not, it doesn't really matter. Chat doing. Uh, just read the article on the stage panel, the one, the black one, and the sound engineer went into the panel, lost his bearing and fell over, causing $20,000 of damage. <laughs> instead of painting super duper black, take a picture with the cap on, the lens cap on, and tell everyone it's your Vanta Black Space Marine Army on night manoeuvres. Uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> Just use the monotone to paint some Tau stealth units going for a predator style optical camo effect. Cool. I don't know Mushu Black, but I do know Mushu Pork, says Spitty Q8. Don't. Honestly, never ends with you, does it? <laughs> we're doing now, we're doing these bits, aren't we? Oh, the fiddly bits. Oh, the fiddly bits. Why are they have to put these little greebles on the side of his backpack just to make my life more difficult? Thanks, G Dubs. Give me a little file. That might be getting there better. Little gentle file. Gentle file. Anyway, it's cleaned out. <clears throat> of course, the problem with spraying any kind of chrome and reflective paints like new chromes and stuff is um, your prep really has to be spot on if you're you know painting a spaceship or a car or anything like a proper chrome color I used to one of some of the people we used to work with they actually did proper chrome plating um i thought that's what i'm looking for and very, very, very they did like you know the the dip thing for decals and they did proper chrome sprayed on chrome plating and stuff not electric plating but proper plating um and one of the things the guy there was telling me and taught me i didn't get to try it but as i walked out the job before i got to that point but you know, one of the things they was, he was trying to explain to me was that you know when you're painting a car you need to make sure the yeah, a real life car. You need to make sure that your any repairs you've done, sanding and stuff is absolutely spot on. Because you know, any imperfections in the finish will reflect through the paint. He said, and that's just for painting a normal car colour, you know, whatever. Because the paint won't show it, but when you put the, the lacquer coat, the gloss lacquer over the car, 
going to show any imperfections. I think you said when you're doing chrome, the slightest, tiniest bit of even a hint of a sanding mark or an imperfection in the surface, like even the tiniest scratch will be like amplified a million times when you get that chrome plating on there. You'll see it from space, basically. So when you're doing any kind of modeling and you're trying to do chrome effects, however you do it, you have to make sure your prep is so well done. When I did the uh, the mega size Unicorn Gundam, because I was being lazy partly, uh, I decided to just instead of painting it, I do the whole thing in C1 Metalizer. So I gloss I gloss black primed the whole thing, all the armor, and then C1 Metalized it. Um, but because I knew I was going to do that, I had to spend a lot longer really get rid of any sanding marks. When I'd taken nubs off and I'd sanded it down. Normally, you know, you sand it to a certain degree, you put the primer on, and then it's nice and smooth, and the paint goes on. <clears throat> when you're doing a chrome, you can't have any sanding marks at all. And it was a nightmare because you'd be surprised how many little sanding marks actually showed up that I couldn't see at all until I put the primer and then the, the, the metalizer on. It's like, dear lord. It looked like it looked like the blade on the front of a JCB. It was like, oh god! But it wasn't to your naked eye without the primer and paint on there. You think it was nice and smooth? You've got to get your prep spot on for any chromey stuff. I think that's. I can see the mold line, but I think it's. I think it's just the stress on the plastic, not the actual three-dimensional raised mold line. Simon, are you still hiding behind the couch while I'm doing these uh, backpacks? Wouldn't be surprised. He's there going, no, no, not the backpacks. He's kind of probably hoping that I'd do this off camera, this bit. <laughs> Come on, give me some sass. Give me some sass. Bring it. How much did you get to done today, Fox? Well, I made four backpacks, three backpacks, and I've glued on some heads. Three hours. Yeah. I do not work fast. I think you understand that now. I think this is taken as red with me. I do not work fast. Even when I'm not being extra special, careful, buildy style, because the breath of the golden demon winner, twice winner, has been imparted onto this plastic. And blessed by the emperor of mankind himself. Even when I'm just building my own sh stuff. And it's just. Yeah. I'm not fast. I never have been. I never will be. I think part of it is because. Like I always say. I hate the building part. The building is not what I do this for. But. With Games Workshop. It's weird. Because. Oddly. I actually enjoy the build part of Games Workshop. More than I do anything else. I'm kind of happy to take my time and savour it because I normally hate the building process. When I do find myself enjoying the building process, I like to maximise it and say, you know what, I'm actually enjoying this. I'm going to make the most of it. You know, if, you, if you're building something that you hate building, that's not a fun experience, you'll try and get it done as quickly as possible. When I'm building something that I've got a big mould line there, you know, when I'm building something that I actually enjoy the process, I might try and just you know, go with it, flow with it. Most of it. I've left a big mould line on this thing there. I need to clean that up later. You spoon. I can't do it now. It'll make his back. Uh, wouldn't a matte varnish just turn it grey and remove the reflecting? Yes, that's the problem. A matte varnish on anything shiny will obviously make it matte, but if it's like a chrome or if it's a uh, metallic powder, it'll just make it go grey. But sometimes even a gloss varnish can do that. I've tried. Uh, I put. And it's it's random. I had some C, I had some spoons with C1 metalizer on. I put C1 metalizer on it, and it's nice and reflective. I put some gloss on it, some pledge, and it went a little less. It wasn't quite as bright. It looked like something with gloss varnish on the top. But then the next time I did a spoon, exactly the same. C1 metalizer, gloss varnish. It just went grey. So it's kind of random. It's kind of weird. But a, a metallic powder looks like like chrome or metal. So you put gloss varnish on, then it looks like something painted silver with gloss varnish on it. Yes. I am returned with monsters, says Mayhem. Discuss your monsters. 
Uh, where are we? Though even though even though Fox is saying it's a bad idea, I'm tempted to matte varnish them for the effect. What we're we talking about? Okay, here we are. Just use the Molotov to paint some stealth suits. That was the one earlier on. And he's tempted to tempted to matte to matte varnish them. I would do want to test one first because it may just make them look grey. Because the problem with that Molotov Chrome or Molotov Chrome, however you pronounce it. Is it's not very durable at all. You can't handle the model, especially if it's tabletop. It'll just come off, and you'll get fingerprints on it. So you need to seal it with something. And that's the problem. What do you seal it with that doesn't then make it look like? Often it just looks like something painted silver that's got a gloss varnish over the top. Uh, funnily enough, I painted two spoons this morning for the test, so just got to wait on those. We'll chuck the just painted picture into the group. Yay! Only thing I got done was assembling this Indomitus Blade Guard Ancient. Now, man, I picked up in the boom hook. Cool. Look at my stuff. More backpacks. Might get four done at this rate, maybe. Back to back, you say? Four, you say? Outrageous. How unlikely. Uh, that's what I've just done. Do I need to? I need to clean up his little side parts. They were matron. I can't sort out that mold line that I left on it just yet because I can't. And I am seeing. I'm hoping that these gaps in the belts that I forgot to fill in any way, shape, or form. It seems on some of these guys. I'm hoping I can cover them with greebles, like accessories and stuff, pouches, and that. Let's come over here. Have you all got backpacks on now? Yes. I do like this Primaris design, you know, compared to normal Marines. I do like this this design. It works so well. More realistic pro uh, proportions. I know they're still like eight and a half feet tall, but. And if you want an idea, I've done this before, but if you want an idea how big a Space Marine is compared to a normal human being, that's a Death Guard dude. Although he's kind of running, his legs are a bit squished in a funny angle. That's a Death Guard, dude. That's a Space Marine. Just so you get an idea. Sorry. I like doing that. Right, where's the camera? I'm always off camera, aren't I? Uh, the Molotov Chrome is fine unless you purposely dig into it like some un unnamed people have done just to be an arse about it. But if, you, if it's a tabletop model, though, yeah, that's going to get a lot of wear and tear. You can't. That's the problem. You can't have a model on the tabletop that you've not protected with varnish in some way. Which, when it's a tank, fine, doesn't matter. When it's something that's like shiny, though, I was got shiny and matte. It's where you, what you do, and where. Like for example, if I'm painting, say, I don't know, a vehicle, I might paint the whole vehicle and then matte varnish it. But then. If there's bits on there that need to be shiny, like handrails or anything shiny, like gold stuff, what I can do is go back in with some pledge and just brush that over to give it a bit of a gloss. It's on a tiny detail. The other option, of course, if it's a mixture of gloss and matte, depending on what you what the balance is, is to is to varnish everything gloss and then matte down the matte bit. So, for example, if I wanted. Uh, if I was painting, say, a silver Templar, and he had he had a, a, a yellow shoulder pad and everything else was silver, I could theoretically paint him silver, gloss varnish it, paint that yellow, or rather, well, start again, paint him all silver, paint that yellow, gloss varnish it, and then either matte varnish or lamy and medium the yellow shoulder pad so it wasn't shiny. If you want to avoid masking. But it's not always that easy. Sometimes it's a bit more fiddly than that. But it kind of makes me a little bit sad when you, you see a beautifully painted, say, Imperial Knight on the tabletop. Or that somebody's painted to play on the tabletop. And it's beautifully painted. Loads of detail, but it's just had a matte varnish put over it. So now you've got this Imperial Knight with all the painted parts looking nice and matte. And you've got like some weathering on it. But then all the metal trim, the gold or silver, is just not shiny. And it kills it. It's like, well, I mean, especially with gold trim, because gold doesn't tarnish in real life. It gets dirty. But if you if you drop a piece of gold in some mud, pick it out and put it in some water, it'll just be perfect gold again. It'll be clean. 
So, you know, it's like, oh, but you want that to be shiny. When I did my store morph, the whole thing's matted, but the gold parts, I had to I had to manually gloss them up with some... Um, well, what I did was, actually, sometimes, another way I can do it, is I, with the store morph, I think what I did, I may not have shown it in this order, but basically I painted everything, uh, the, but didn't fully paint the gold parts. So I painted the entire hull, and I painted Retributorum on the gold trim, and then I did a wash of Reichland Flesh Shade, I think it was, on the gold, in the full knowledge that the Reichland Flesh Shade is matte. So at that point, all my gold trim is matte because the shade has matted it down. So I did that, painted everything, got the gold on, put the shade on it, and left it as that. Finished painting everything else, matte varnished the whole model. Then I went in with the Retributor armor and the Auric armor gold and the Liberator gold and did my little highlights and stuff. That brought the shine back because they're shiny. And then I went over that with a, a quick coat of Pledge, just brushed on very lightly just to reinforce it. And that brought the shiny back, but the model was matted down. And if theoretically I didn't need to put that gloss varnish on because those gold parts are not bits that you're going to handle very often. So you could theoretically have just put the gold paint on and left it unprotected and those would have been shiny. Like if you're building a tank, if you build a, a model tank, you might want to make one of your steps of the weathering rubbing on some graphite powder onto edges to give them that metallic tinge when the light hits it. But if you put a matte varnish over, that's going to go. So what you do is you finish your model, you weather it, you varnish it, you matte varnish it, and then you go in with the graphite just to rub it on the corners because then it'll have that shine on the corners. The problem, of course, is it's not protected. But if it's a display model, you're never going to handle it. So there's various ways you can do it, but it's it's sometimes the logical thought process of how I'm going to do it. What am I going to paint first? In what order? How am I going to get this so that, say, on the on the Cunis Rex, I've got the red and black armor panels are matte. The metal armor panels are shiny. And maybe the metal trim, the, sh the silver trim, maybe even more shiny. I don't know yet because I've got weathering to go over the top. And it may well be, I don't have to worry about it because the weathering I put over the top mats down the shiny metals anyway. And then maybe all I have to worry about is the gold trim, if I have gold trim on it. Maybe I have to go back and make that shiny so that everything is matted, including all the shiny metal parts. And the gold trim, which is shiny. So it's, it's, it's that kind of thinking that sometimes takes a while. Figuring out the painting order and how you're going to do things. But there's nothing, nothing makes me more sad than when you see a beautiful painted Imperial Knight and it's all just matte. It's like, well, you, you've taken the silver trim or the gold trim and it's just not shiny. That just is sadness. I know you need to protect it for the tabletop, but a little bit extra thought and care and you could have had a mixture of shiny and matte and that would look fantastic. But you do get bogged down in the how am I going to do that? way of thinking of it. When I do the Canis Rex, I'm kind of tempted to try and avoid using an airbrush as much as possible because I want to teach and I'm trying to teach people not everybody who's going to paint the Canis Rex is going to paint it with experience. They're not all experienced model makers. Some people will be painting it because they want to play it on the tabletop and they might be like 14 years old or you know young builder or an inexperienced modeler. Because there's plenty of people out there that play Warhammer that don't paint models. They don't know what they're doing. They just like to play the game. You might get that and decide to paint it. But I, I could go and teach them airbrush. But if they're, if they're just still a beginner in painting terms, it's easier if I can teach them how to paint it or show them how to paint it without using an airbrush. Because then it's more accessible to everybody who doesn't have an airbrush. With Warhammer, I like to try and avoid airbrush if I can. A, because I'm lazy, but B, because it just makes that tutorial more accessible to people, to more people. So it might be. I've not quite decided how I'm going to do the metallics anyway. Quite sure yet. There's lots of thinking going on. It's going to be a while before I can get to paint it. So, yeah. Get faster with these, these ear backpacks. The stringy thing's on me glue, but it's not hairs. It's just glue. Oops. Yep. 
I was quite pleased to see Duncan yesterday doing a technique on his little um, Slanesh guy that I've done for quite a while, but I didn't really know was a thing that anybody else did. Which is um, when you paint a metallic and you put a shade over it and it goes all matte because the shade mats it down. If you want to bring the shade back, you can apply a glaze of the metallic colour. So if you paint something, say, Stormhouse Silver, and then you put a blue a blue glaze of, say, Lamian Medium and some colour like he does. I think he used, like, um, I don't know, some blue. But it mats it down. So what I've done before is I've done, like, a, say, say Stormhouse Silver coat, which is shiny. You put a, a Agrax Earth shade on it, which mats it down. But then you go in with the Stormhouse Silver again, and you thin it down to a glaze, and you glaze it over the top where you want the light, shiny bits to be. And it just brings that shine back without repainting it. I was quite pleased to see him do that because that's something I've done for a while but never really thought that anybody else did. So I like that. I've obviously been doing something right that I figured out by myself. And I like when that happens. It's nice when you realise that something you've done that you figured out yourself is actually an established process but other people have thought of. Because you think, wow, I must know what I'm doing because I figured that out by myself. Hey, where are we up to? Uh, Billy says, I decorated a room for my mum in exchange for Indomitus. It was well worth it. I like that kind of deal. Uh, -num 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 -num. Uh, where are we? Uh, I've seen a few contradicting reports saying to leave at 24 hours, some say a week, so leaving them for a week. I don't know what we're talking about there. Is that the Molotov? Depends your environment. Mm -mm -mm. I'm cooking in a drying cabinet. Adding my heat, adding any heat, you risk it drying too fast and going dusty. I don't know what we're talking about now. It's going to be different for every person because of environment. I've got to be honest with you. If a paint is that finicky that you have to dry it in a certain way or you have to leave it for so long or you can't dry it quickly with. If a paint's that finicky, I'm just not going to use it. Regardless of the effect. Because... Uh, in my world, I want to be able to get a paint, put it on, crack on with the next bit. I don't mind that, you know, oils and enamels take a few days to dry. That's fine. I don't mind that, you know, um, lacquers can dry within seconds, but some other paints don't. I can live with that. But when it's like you've got to apply it in a certain way and it's got to be left this long and you need, you can't put it in the heat, and you can't put it in the cold and you can't do this. It's like, you know what, I'm, I'm just putting it back in the box now and I'll go and get something that I know works. I'm not very adventurous. Not that I'm not adventurous. It's just I've got time. I can't be. I can't be farting about. I want things just to work out the box. Uh, I need to pick a colour for a seventy boss Mustang. Original plan was black, but not sure now. Ooh, what's a good colour? Ooh, you know. Oh, I've always liked on muscle cars. Is lime? I mean, bright lime green. Proper muscle car lime green with the black stripe, the bumblebee stripes. Proper light. I mean, that kind of green. Proper, like, muscle car lime. Even brighter than that. Lime green with the black bumblebee stripes. Ooh. Just. Just. Imagine you've got the trunk of a car like that. At the side of the car, you've got the trunk here. And on the back, you've got the gorgeous. Black bumblebee. Like a thick one. Thin one. Going around, oh, 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 yeah, I like me some muscle cars. I like me some muscle cars. Plymouth Roadrunner in full NASCAR set with the long nose and the massive. Oh yeah, he <laughs> Hemi Cuda. Oh, that's my favourite. I, I, I've seen a Hemi Cuda in that kind of livery, lime green with the black stripes, and I may have done a little bit of a sex wee when I saw it. I was like, wow, it was a car show, and I'm like, oh. I'd always liked the pictures of them, but I'd never seen one in real life until I went to a detailing show and there was a Hemi Cuda right there. It's like. Oh, it's lime green. Oh, it's got the bumblebee stripes. Oh, I've done a bit of a sex week. Oh, can I take it? Thank you. No, I couldn't. I did. They wouldn't let me take it away, unfortunately. <sighs> Lee Stevenson. Yes, they've been the drying cabinets. Just two light bulbs with a fan to keep a bit of airflow going. So not too warm. They've been in there for since Wednesday. So fingers crossed. That's far too much faff for me. I know some people don't mind, but I, I just can't be bothered with that kind of nonsense. 
I've actually stopped doing oil paint gunk washes now because of leaving it for five days when I can do it with an enamel. You can do an enamel paint gunk wash, get it on, take it off, and it's ready within 24 hours. Or at worst case, you can hair dry it if you need to. Just because I've, I've kind of, I just can't be bothered waiting for days now. Uh, part of my plan is to do a candy sasabi, but too scared to start at the moment. Want to try some of the Archon pigments for that. Ooh, yeah. That Molotov stuff, I can imagine if you were doing a candy colour, as long as it's not affected by the clear paints that go over the top, that will be quite effective. I have tried, word of warning, I uh, don't know if it's specific to C1 Metalizer, but I tried, I got a spoon and it was Gloss Black Primer, C1 Metalizer, which is a metal, metallic buffing powder, basically graphite, uh, and then over that I put some Tamiya Clear Orange, and it looked quite good, quite good. But then what I did was I got some gloss black primer, some C1 metalizer, some pledge, so a gloss coat, and then some Tamiya clear orange. For some reason that Tamiya clear orange did not like going over a gloss coat. It was like it went into crackle mode. It was like a, it was like a grill in Badlands. It was like it was, so I don't know if it's because it was on a gloss surface and the surface tension was messed up. So I don't you have to do lots of experimentation before you commit to painting in anger. I don't do instant gratis, Foxy. Modeling is a meditation for me and I'm exercising patience that many need. I don't, I know what you mean. I don't mean I want to do something and bang, paint it down next. It's not so much that. I don't want to finish something quickly, but I don't want to be waiting for days to do the next thing. And I don't want to use something that's got to be, I don't want something that's got to be, this is why I don't like to say the ammo by make paints because they're too fussy. They're, we don't mind them, but they're all right. But it's like you, you've got to apply them exactly right. Otherwise, they look like garbage. Well, I don't want to risk ruining my model because I didn't get them exactly right then. It's it's not that I'm in a rush to get things done. It's that I, I enjoy the process, but I don't enjoy sitting around on my hands and not being able to do the process because I've got to wait for the last thing to finish. So, you know, like I say, it's partly why I stopped doing gunk washes, oil paints, just because I was sitting around for five days. And when I'm trying to get stuff to build it, to sell it, Five days is a long time to not be doing anything destructive. So, yeah, and when I'm filming as well, it's like five days. I can't do any filming because I can't do anything. So for me, it's a more of a practical thing for me in that I've got got to be doing stuff, film it or to sell it or to whatever, and I can't really take five days out to do nothing. So, but I'm a little bit lazy. I don't want things to be complicated too much. I want to be happy, build it, paint it. There you go. But I know what you mean. Some people enjoy that, and it's not for everybody, but... Uh, Roadrunner must be orange with black stripes. Yes. Lime green is colour number two. Yes, yes. Lime green, man. Lime green. Uh, my dad had one, says Scale Model Muse. What a Roadrunner. What with the full six foot tall spoiler on the back and the NASCAR nose cone. Oh. Fox, that explains why A models now have lots of Abtai Lung Starship filth in stock. Do they? If everybody's been looking for Starship filth, E models apparently now have some in stock and go get some. Go get your starship filth. Right, I need to go for a wee. We've only got half an hour to go, but I'll go for a wee. Let me just make sure my buttons are still working. Slap it on. Yes. For some reason, chat's knackered again. Always knackered. I might just turn chat off, you know, because it never seems to flipping work. Let's just turn it off. There you go. Now you can see stuff over here. I'm going to go for a quick wee. When I come back, we'll do another backpack. Yes. Back in a minute.
there we go, back again, back again. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, so it's not, I don't know, I understand that some people, you know, do like that part of the process where it's, it takes time and it's all part of the creative thing and having multiple projects on the go at the same time is also good. But it's just me, I think I, I get the problem with that I have, this might make it make more sense. The problem that I struggle with, with myself, is that I get bored instantly with, doesn't matter what I'm doing. I could have been looking forward to doing something for years as soon as I start doing it, I'm bored. I, I really suffer from intense ennui about things really easily. And I have to do everything I can to not get bored and go and do the next thing instead. To, to stick with something. It's part of the way my, my mind works. There's various things I have to deal with. But one of them is it doesn't take much for me to just get frustrated and bored by something and go off and do something else. Which is why I have you know a litany of failed not failed but a litany, litany of started and never completed projects over the years um to my shame and i'm acutely aware it's something i've become acutely aware of over the years that i just i get so bored and if i get bored of something it's not something i can fight through very easily if i get bored of something really bored i just drop it i just walk away and I don't want that to happen with with this model making because this is what I want to do for my for my living. So I have to be very careful about putting myself in a situation where I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered. I just want to play on the Xbox or I just want to do something else. And it's 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 also the problem that because I'm a creative type anyway, there's always some sort of silly creative idea going through my head. But another risk that I have is that, you know, when I'm drawing a comic strip, I'm having a brilliant idea for a model. When I'm doing a model, I'm having a brilliant idea for a drawing. When I'm, I don't know, making a video, I'm having a brilliant idea for a piece of music I could write. And it's, it's all just I'm my own worst enemy. And even so, it really is a case that I can sit there and be like, I've been looking forward to building Kit X for years. I'm now going to build Kit X. And as soon as I start building it, I'm starting thinking about something else, a different kit or a drawing or a piece of music I could write. And it just doesn't work. It, it, it really cripples me in a lot of ways. And it's, it was a miracle that I did a webcomic for five years. Um, and the only reason that webcomic finished was because I left that job. I was basically the, most of the material was from conversations I had with my colleagues at work. And when I left that job, I lost that source of inspiration and it just dried up. But for some reason, in that five years, I would work hard all week. And then at the weekend, I would spend the entire weekend drawing the comic strip. Somehow I managed to stick with that for five years. And today, I don't know how, even, to, even now, I don't know how. Um, and that was quite unusual for me. So with this model making guru thing now, it's the same kind of thing. It's like <clears throat> I've stuck with it for several years now. And I, but I... That's good, but the downside, the problem I've got is that I still get that kind of goldfish boredom with the individual bills. And it doesn't take much, it doesn't take much to distract me to something else, but it takes a lot of effort to get back into focus on what I'm doing. And if something goes wrong with the build, that's even worse because then I get the frustration that something's gone wrong. And then I get the, the stress of it. And then that makes me go and think about something else. And then I get the boredom. So it's like, so for me, when I'm looking at, you're wondering why I'm saying all this. When you're looking at you know, the conversation we're having about, you know, just want things to work. I don't want to have to faff about and do this and wait for three days and apply it in the correct manner. It's not so much that I'm lazy. It's more just that I know that's a big problem for me. Anything that, increases my chance of just going off and doing something else is something I need to avoid. So for me personally, I can't I can't get involved in things that are fussy or complicated or you know they must be applied and then you must wait for four days and store it in a 10 degree centigrade cupboard and pray to the omnisire and run around in circles and spit three times. No. Because that's where I just get bored. And then the boredom comes in and then I give up on that project. 
I'm not I'm not going to be specific about this, but there are there are if you watch some of my videos, there are ones where you can see the point at which I lost interest in the project and I just kind of rushed through the rest of it. I'm not going to be specific, but you, if you know me, you'll, 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 you'll spot it here and there. And I don't mean the big Millennium Falcon, no. <laughs> but there are there are things on there where you I can see the exact point at which I'm like, I'm bored of this now. I want to go and do the next big thing. And I have to fight against that. Because I need to, I need to stay focused. I need this to work. I need this to be my my source of income. I don't want to find myself in five years being the middle aged guy in an office full of twenty year olds who are telling me what to do. Because I, you know, because that's just you don't want that. Also, I don't want to be in an office working in an office anyway. But so I can't really afford to just wander around aimlessly like I do with most things. <clears throat> And it sounds a bit dramatic, but it's absolutely the case that it can just be something simple as I need to leave this paint to cure for four days. Well, I can't afford to have multiple projects on the go because if I get bored of, I'll get bored of one doing the other one. I need to, because of the way my brain works, I need to do one thing at once as much as possible. Well, also because I've not got enough space, but I need to avoid that kind of puppy with multiple tennis balls scenario the worst thing i can do so for me it's a bit of a pain in the bum it does mean i've got to stick with one thing but i've also got to try and avoid stuff that just makes life hard anything that that risks that, that makes the process not enjoyable is a risk and anything that makes me have to go off and do something else like you know i'm enjoying this build but now i need to leave this paint to dry for five days i'll go and play some xbox Three months later, better do some work and some modeling, isn't it? Yeah. Last thing you want to do is send me off to play on my Xbox. That's the worst idea. <laughs> Bad idea, that. So I, I understand what everybody's saying. Yes. Some people enjoy that, and it's not a bad thing. But for me personally, I can't afford to take that risk. I need to, I need things to work and work. Not easily. I don't want no challenge at all. But I need things to work and not be fussy, which is why I'll try and avoid the ammo paints because I, a, because it's it's not that much fuss to use them. It's just using mist coats. But because there's a chance they'll screw up if I don't get it exactly right, I'm not risking an entire project on on that, especially when I'm filming it. Because the problem I've got is if I'm filming something, a build, I don't film it and then some people what they'll do is they'll, they'll film a whole project and then they'll put the videos together which is fine I, I don't do that what i do is i film it as i go along so when you see a video like a 20 minute video episode four of painting the such and such that's the stuff i've done that week pretty much i film half an hour's worth of stuff and make an episode so i can't afford for it to get it screwed up halfway through because if i screw it up halfway through you've already seen the first four episodes of a build what happens if I'm halfway through painting something and I screw it up? You've seen episodes one, three, whatever. You've seen me do the building and the priming and the base coat. And now suddenly I'm like, and I can't show you anymore now because I messed it up and I've thrown it away. So I can't, I can't get too risky. I don't have the luxury, unfortunately, of doing it because I enjoy it. it because I'm filming it. My commitment, and it's a commitment I happily take on. My commitment is to show people how to just a basic way to do stuff to give people a rough idea of how these things work so i have to make sure that whatever i do i get to the end of it i can't just stop halfway through and say yeah i messed it up and i can't be, i can't fix it so we'll just have to leave it there i can't do that so if i'm building it just for myself and i'm not filming it then i'll probably t i do take more risks but yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a different position to most people in that I can't afford to take that kind of risk, sadly. Anyway, carried away there. Right, swig of... Uh, oh. A swig of not tea, because not tea is the best. Uh, where are we? Uh, I'm Aside from my Age of Sigma, that's half done. I have maybe 15 random projects, so I get it. Uh... Uh, we're talking about. Uh, I also work too, Fox. I didn't have to leave home for. A I'll start again. 
went wrong, didn't it? I also work too, Foxy. If I didn't have to leave home for work, I'd run out of models to do with all that time. <laughs> yeah, you just buy more, though, wouldn't you? You just buy more. Uh, I'm back. Just watched motorsport from Sonoma, California. Cool. I mean, if I was just doing this, if I wasn't filming and was doing this just for me, just building stuff and painting stuff for me, and maybe I was just doing a blog and I wasn't doing actual videoing, I probably would take more time and I would do things that took longer because then it wouldn't matter if I got bored halfway through because I could put it to one side and come back to it later. You know, I would get more experimental with stuff and use more complicated methods, but because I'm doing it to film it, my entire priority is to, is to film the process and show show a simple way to do it. So, yeah, it's, it's pluses and minuses, basically. I guess I just don't know how to be bored, says Muse. I don't, because I've always got the Xbox if I get bored. I'll never run out of models, but I need more, says Sarah J. We've seen your stash. You need to make sure, uh, ask Colin if he'll put those pictures in the boom hut as well. Uh, uh, la, la, la. Yes, Foxy, it's ritual lol, says Muse. Uh, all the models, says Colin. Yeah, and Dad. I'm jealous of your three guys' stashes. I have mine down to 20 models now. I don't know how many I've got in my stash. I mean, right in front of me here, I've got one... Two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. I've got about twenty in here in this room. Now, keep in mind that anything from the entire space battleship Yamato kit to uh, a little box with five dudes in it that somebody sent me to the the five warhammer heroes that jamie sent me that's in here in the spare room i've probably got god knows i don't know i don't know how many i've got i've got loads and loads of bits and bobs and small kits and ship from you know captain space captain harlock or whatever he's called space barrett harlock and i've got this and that and those are figures and little gumplers and I probably got about 100 in my stash, I probably think. But that's including, don't forget, that's including the entire Warhammer Conquest, which is 40 dudes and 10 vehicles and other 40 dudes. I probably got about 100, maybe, in my stash. But that's everything from big kits to little tiny kits, including things like my naked man and woman that Paul sent me. <laughs> yeah. And my little Stargate Teltac 3D print from Shapeways that's like a single thing, so. And so when I say 100, it's probably more like about 200, but you know, Feel like a rookie with less than 20 kits, says Lee. Trust me, it, it, it'll grow. Don't worry about it. Because the problem is, you start a build. This will always be the way. And nothing to be ashamed of if it doesn't happen yet. You start a build. You're working on the build. It's part of what we're saying before. You're working on the build. It's the most important thing in the world because you've been looking forward to doing it for ages. The moment you start it, You'll take a quick break to go make a brew and you'll have a look on the internet at your social media and you'll see a photograph of a kit that's just been released from some man and you'll be like, oh, oh, would you look at that? Oh, and that's it. The rot sets in. Your brain's now. I've been wanting to build this thing for years, but think about that shiny thing you just saw on that post, on that Facebook, on that Twitter, whatever. And now all you can think about is that other kit. Like, I got the Space Battleship Yamato and all I wanted to do when I ordered it, I was in the middle of building something else. All I wanted to do was dump whatever I was working on and go and build my space battleship Yamato. It's the one five hundred scale, the three foot long one. And I was like, oh, come on, come on, come on. I want to build it, want to build it, want to build it. And then when it got to the, I'd finished the one I was working on. Well, let's just say it's still in the box and unopened after three years. It's still under the bench here. Because when I finished that one I was working on, something happened, like perhaps I had to, quickly make something for somebody else or a commission came in or I had to go and do some artwork for something and then it took a few days and before I knew it something else had popped in there and maybe I'd seen this other kit that came out and I'm like, oh I need that kit and oh and that got him stuck between the Yamato and what I was yeah so don't worry about if you've not got a big stash right now when you've been doing this for like 20 30 years you, you you'll you'll be looking for a spare room trust me to put stuff in you you'll be bemoaning the fact you're like 
We need relatives to come over and stay for a month. We don't have a spare room. We've got three spare rooms. Yeah, we don't have a spare room. There are no spare rooms. There are all the rooms are full of all the stash. And the, yeah, we have no family. <laughs> we have not no family anymore. No one can stay. Not ever. Uh, where we are. 25 at a glance, but over my shoulder, I have four full Rubbermaid crates full. Yep. Oh, God, I forgot about all them. I've got two big plastic crates full of... Okay, more than 100 then. I've got... <laughs> Maybe more, maybe 200, I don't know. It's like right under this desk right now. What have I got? Let's have a look. We have, I hope you can still hear me, by the way, when I'm further away from the microphone. There it is. Base Battleship Yamato. There's a 160 scale Freedom Gundam, but not perfect grade. There is a, uh, what the hell is that? There's the perfect grade Zaku that I never finished. There is the Sananju that someone very kindly got me for me. Uh, Demir Kahondrik got me that thank you very much there's the federation runabout yangtze kiang there's a y-wing there's the zaku warrior live concert version from paul we have the macross frontier messiah we have five uh space marine heroes we have the imperial knights renegade set two knights and some scenery we have an imperial astro militar and valkyrie we have the halo warhog that kenneth sent me there's some other stuff under there that I can't see because there's something in the way, but I know there's stuff down there that I've forgotten about. Dear God. What is actually down there? Uh, we have... Oh God, yeah, there's... There's like... There's the... Uh, there's the That was me, Valkyrie. There's a Kshatriya. There's the... Um, I keep forgetting I've got the... Um, Giara, not the Giara Zulu, the other one. Giara Doga. I've got a Giara Doga to do. I've got an Age of Sigmar horse and carty thing that um, I was given. I've got a little storm cast from Scott from uh, Orkney. His friend uh, Fluffy Gut sent me that. I've got lots of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs! I've got a box. I've got all of Mr. Love's model making's Dark Imperium set. Dark Angels. I've got a load of Death Guard, Maggot Kin and Pox Walkers from Simon. I've got more dinosaurs. And that's just in this room. There's tons of them. There's millions of them. So, yeah. That's, there's stuff to keep me going for years. I just need to make sure I'm doing it. That's the problem, you see. Uh, where are we? This Muse says, My spare room's nearly full. As soon as my youngest moves out, I've got another. There you go. Good girl. Colin says, I was offered the spare room, but I turned it down as I knew I'd fill it with new stash goodies. Dude! You, oh, that was the wrong decision. You, oh... Is the spare room bigger than the room you've got now for your, for your man cave? Uh, Chris Conabair just subscribed. Thank you very much, Chris. Very kind of you. Welcome, welcome. Um, is that spare room bigger? Have you considered moving your man cave to the bigger spare room? Would that be an option? Oh, have I planted a seed now? Are you going to get in trouble? I'm going to get in trouble now, aren't I? Uh... Uh, Muse, I'm afraid you've contacted APMS, Advanced Plastic Modeler Syndrome, says Panzer. Muse says, I'm trying hard to finish some of these half-done things. I'm not, op I'm not opening anything else now. Yeah, good luck with that. You say that. You say those words. Those words come out of your mouth. Not going to happen. <coughs> Keep telling yourself that. You will the... Muse says, see, Muse is already, you can already see Muse has got the same problem we've all got because she's already in denial stage. Because she's saying, now these two minis don't count as they were individual purchases from eBay. She's making excuses now. That's part of your stash, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who you got, what, from where, all part of the stash. Like saying, I, I, I'm not an alcoholic, I can stop whenever I want, but this little glass of wine here is just an exception. No, there you go. <laughs> Nim's got three kits in her stash, a Master Grade GM Sniper, a SD Gundam, and my big boy, the MG Psycho Zaku. That's my big project. I also have kits that need to either be painted or have their decals. Uh, to quote a YouTube friend, it's called Sable, stash accumulated beyond life expectancy. Yes. Buying hobby stuff and doing hobby stuff are two different hobbies, it says Lee Stevens. Absolutely. There's two hobbies in this. There's built, there's buying stuff, and there's doing the stuff with the stuff. So Sarah Jane says, "Oh, I'm Sable, absolutely." 
Uh, Colin says, yes, it is. The spare room is bigger than his correct man cave, but he can't be asked to move. Oh, well, why don't you, you know, when you need to go in for your op and stuff and you're going to be out of commission for a little bit, out of action, why don't you see if you can, if you can perhaps work a little bit on the good nature of your good lady wife, who is beautiful and talented and very intelligent, uh, and your kids, and see if they can maybe move stuff for you while you're out of commission for a few weeks, recovering. Treat, maybe they could move your man cave to the bigger spare room <gasps> wouldn't that be lovely that'd be like one of them things where you the person goes away for the weekend and comes back and they've had some bbc crew in doing the house up and it all it's going to fall apart in six months time and everything's pink but it's still nice it's nice when you go away and come back and suddenly oh i've got a bigger a bigger man cave Ooh. putting thoughts in your head now aren't i <laughs> yeah Uh, la, 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 la. We need to set up a big swap shop for kits, says Phil East. Lee Stevenson says, did you see the Channel 4 program on Lego? One guy bought a second house just to store his Lego. Yes, that guy's an idiot. <laughs> but we're all in exactly the same boat. So we do all do the same thing. So far, I'm good, Foxy. No new boxes opened at all. So you're making the excuses now. Mm, doesn't matter if you opened them or not. Doesn't matter where you got them. <laughs> this one doesn't count because I've not opened it yet. Yes, it does. <laughs> trust me you're in the black hole we're all we're all on the event horizon we're all screwed we're all heading towards spaghettification at some point we've all crossed the event horizon where there's no coming back just, yeah apart from no apart from nim who's only got three kits she's managed to she's just shy of the event horizon but she can feel it pulling she can feel the pull of the event horizon the black hole just pulling it ever so slightly towards it you can feel it nim can't you, you can feel it just pulling you in oh, can you resist oh Maybe you will. Maybe you won't. Uh, my wife is a knitter crocheter and she was saying that someone had to admit they are now hiding yarn in the bath panels to hide the stash from her husband. <laughs> yeah. Colin says, I have insomnia and to do late shows and they are sleeping. Oh, OK. Would that be a, a difficulty? And then if it was in the spare room. Oh, OK. All right. We'll let you off. We'll let you off. Unless you have two man caves, unless you have your man cave in there and the man cave in the cupboard, so you can do the late shows in one. I'm, I'm just going to drink my coffee and not plant these seeds in your head. Imagine two man caves. One with a great big workbench where you can do all the big projects. And then one at the late night where you can just do your little little late night streams. I'm just, I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh... Lee Stevens says to Phil East, it would be good for a trip to Warhammer World or one of the IPMS meets when the world is no longer on fire. What to bring a whole load of your stash and see who wants to swap for what? <laughs> yeah, maybe we should do that because we like me and dad and Colin, and everybody, we've all said when the world's not on fire at some point, we need to arrange. I mean, I need to go back to Warhammer World. So does dad and Colin, and everybody else. We all need to go. Colin's not been yet. He's experienced Warhammer World. But me and Chris and dad went and Simon didn't go because he forgot. Or rather, he was too busy buying Pikachu in London for some. I don't know. He basically forgot. Literally, was supposed to meet him. Like, where's Simon? Don't know, dude. Where are you? Crap, I forgot. Okay, moving on. But anyway, so yes, we do need to go back, and um, so maybe, we, and we've said when we do go back at some point, we'll arrange it. We'll put a post up on our on our respective pages and saying, hey, we're going to go to Warhammer World. Let's all meet up and store Warhammer World and see if we can just like get free stuff. We won't. But like, you know, 5,000 people turning up at Warhammer World. It'll be absolutely fun. But unlike, you know, Area 51, you won't get shot. So we probably will do that. And we'll put up a thing saying, let's all go to Warhammer World. So I think, yeah, if if we do do that, I think it could be fun just to all meet up in the car park when we get there and just bring some of your stash stuff you're never going to build and just bring it and see if anybody wants to like swap swap with hey do you want oh, i want that do you want this and swap just swap stuff all in good good natured humor and just bring parts of your stash that you know you're never going to get around to building see what you can trade it for <laughs> that'd be quite good fun that uh... When I get down to one more box, I'll buy more, says Raging Modeler. Just don't look in the brown box with lots of unpainted minis. There you go. But morning, Vicar. And this is, I'll tell you what, this is the problem. You know, like I always say, I'm a builder. I'm a painter, not a builder. But I also say that I do enjoy making the Warhammers. And it's like, sometimes when I'm, if I've lost my mojo, what I will do, if I've lost, if I'm painting and I've lost the, the urge to live, sometimes I'll get bored. What I'll do is I'll put it to one side. I'll pick out some Space Marines or some Imperial Guard and I'll just build them. I'll get like a squad of five and just build them because it passes a few hours 
And it's kind of relaxing. It's the only building I like is Warhammer. And Gumpler. So, but this is less stressful than Gumpler. But, so I'll do that. But the problem is, I end up with a load of stuff I've not painted. It's too, not good. Not good. So, yeah, it's it, it just, mm, it just builds up. So you do end up with a lot of unpainted minis. It's something like, I can't be bothered painting. I'll build something. That's why I've got like 100 Imperial Guard and like 60 Tempestus Scions. And I've now got about, I think I've got 60 or 50 Death Corps dudes. And I've got like God knows how many Space Marines. And I've still not painted enough to have an army on a table yet. It's ridiculous. Yay, another Mama Fox Hog, says Scaly Models. Absolutely. Any spare room in which a model kit will fit is a wasted space and should be filled, says Sarah Jane. Absolutely. Foxy, the country isn't big enough for that sort of invite, says Skill Model Muse. <laughs> yeah. Sarah Jane says to Muse, I use rattle cans as I don't have an airbrush. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Stop. Hang on. Use rattle cans. If you watched Colin's stream earlier on this afternoon where we saw all Sarah Jane's Formula One cars and, and, and motorbikes and that. And they're in the Festa 67's workshop group right now, the pictures. They all look amazing. I can't do shiny cars. I, I, I will refuse to do I just can't do it. I'm just, I haven't got the skills. I need to do weathering to cover up all the crap that I do. But there's all these Formula One cars and stuff, and they're all they're beautifully painted, and there's like Tamiya Box art level, and I'm like, that's rattle cans? Really. That's even more impressive. Even more impressive. Yeah. Just recently took my airbrush out of its box. This is another reason why I like doing the Warhammer stuff, because it encourages brush painting. And although I've got an airbrush and a spray booth, and I, I, I know what I'm doing, it's kind of sometimes I can't be bothered. I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to get the airbrush out because I've got, I can't be fussed. I just want to... Do... So, you know, sometimes I just don't want to spray. Like, I know it's going to be covered in dust, but this, not a touch of airbrush on that. That's base coat of rattle. That was rattle can primer. And then everything else is brushed. I'm not even, it's not even finished yet. It's got loads of stuff to do on that. But there's no, there's no, there's no airbrush on that. All brush painting. And yet, I enjoyed that a million times more than if I'd done it with an airbrush. So I'm kind of going off using, I use my airbrush less and less nowadays. Every time I get it out, it's like the trigger's stuck. <clears throat> and I have to clean it out because it's seized up over time. So, yes. <sighs> so I am, I am, that's why I'm, one of the reasons I've kind of fallen in love with the Warhammer a bit is it's, it's taught me how to brush paint. Because until I did the Warhammer, I didn't really know how to brush paint. It's taught me how to brush paint. And it's created a love for brush painting for me. A lot less hassle. Uh, I just enjoy brush painting. It's so much more fun. Uh, where are we? Uh, I prefer just doing the weathering, says Lord Barclay. Yeah. Uh, Carl at Making Models is off. He says, food times to tar for now. Thanks for coming in, Carl. Take care of yourself, buddy. Nice to see you. I'll share them on the hut after tonight's show, says Colin. That's Sarah's, uh, Sarah's... I take it, Sarah, you've not got a Facebook and don't intend on having a Facebook page, so fair enough. But yeah, you feel free to get Colin to post them in the boom hut if you want. Hey. Up to... Dad says Malud, so I'm guessing he's just come in. Welcome. I would love to go to Warhammer World, only two hours drive for me. I've only been once and I loved it. I loved it. The problem I've got is if we go back again, I've already taken photographs of everything. So I can't really take photographs again because I've already posted them all up. Boot sale swap, says Lee. <laughs> Muse says I can brush an entire model just the same as she can a rattle can one. Again, patience. This is the weird thing, like I said before, though. I don't... This kind of goes against what I said about I don't want something to be complicated because it gets me bored. But I'd much rather brush paint something than airbrush it. I can prime and airbrush and pre-shade a vehicle, a tank, in a couple of hours. Or I can spend a few days brush painting it and dry brushing it. Because like I say, this this thing, all this shading on here is all dry brushing. It's all brush painting. The only, the only non-brush painting is the rattle cam primer. So... Um, it's all brush painting and there's a little bit of dry brushing, but all the all the shading... It's dry brushing. And I just enjoy it. And I don't know why, because it's a lot more complicated than doing it on an airbrush. You know, primer coat, pre-shade, base coat is a lot easier. 
in terms of time, but I I find airbrushing a pain in the bum. I don't know. Uh, la, 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 la. Whereabouts are you, Lee? Uh, says I'll start again. Lee, Lee Stevenson says whereabouts are you to Dad? And Dad says Cheshire. What he means is are they Liverpool? Cheshire, you. Yeah, you're on the skirts of Cheshire like I'm on the skirts of Cheshire. We'll both say we're in Cheshire, eh? Cheshire. Don't be a div. You're a, you're a scouser. Ah, eh? No, no. Willow. There you go. It's better. Here, <laughs> Willow. Hills me a port. Call Eileen Bilton. I'll stop now. Uh, it's now on the hook. Me, that impatience, says Colin. Lol. I don't have Facebook, Foxy. But there you go. You don't need Facebook. You don't need it. If you don't want it, don't get it. Uh, she also thanks me for saying that. It's just coming from you. That means a lot. Thank you very much. Uh, Dad, prepare yourself for the Michael. I assume that means everybody's going to take the mickey out of him because he says he's from Cheshire. Uh, Lee's in Bristol, but I thought I would ask in case you were both typing as next door neighbours. And then Dad says, I'm from Bristol originally. <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, I think that's going to do us today. We're just waffling now because I'm not going to do another backpack in the next. I've done in the next, uh, you know, four minutes. So we've only got three more to do, and then we've got all the accessories. So I think next week we should get these guys finished, and then we can either make a start on the um, Space Wolves Combat Patrol, or we'll make a start on the uh, the motorbikes that uh, Lee very kindly sent me from Black Rifle Model Works. And I must stop saying Black Rifle Model Works. I don't know why I can't say it properly. But he did send me these very kindly. I might get them done next week. Uh, see how they compare to the original ones. I hate the original ones. The, the old school kits. Can't stand them. I've got them in the Conquest set for George. I haven't even made them yet. <laughs> but I'm looking forward to them because they look a lot better. So more fun to make. Anyway. I think that's going to do us. I think that's going to do us for today. I need to go off and make the dinner. So I shall leave it there. Thank you very much for watching everyone. Uh, I will be back, of course, tomorrow on Monday night at 9 p.m. It's the eModels live show on eModels channel tomorrow. Uh, so do go and make sure you're watching that. If you haven't noticed, by the way, I did post up an archive copy of the Friday's live stream with the Canis Rex build. Uh, now, I can only upload it. I can only get it off YouTube at 720p, I'm afraid. So it's, it's on my channel. It's stuck at 720p. But if you haven't watched it, do go and have a look. I know it's, a, it's an archive live stream, so you can't get involved in the chat. But I'll be posting them up on my channel as well. So I'll be doing another one of those next Friday. Uh, throughout the week, I will try and get on with that Lehman Ross. I will try. I keep saying this and then I keep not doing it. No. Just... It's that stage where for some reason I've got to the chipping point and, and to do the chipping and my brain's like, don't want to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it this week. As long as nothing else comes up. So I'll try and get that done this week. Well, of course, be back tomorrow. Don't forget tonight, of course, uh, I'm about to finish now. Dad and I assume Colin will be doing Dad's in between show at 6 p.m. in like three minutes on Scaly Models channel. So make sure you go click over to uh, Scaly Models channel. He's there in chat, one of your mods. And make sure to give everybody a like and subscribe and make sure Festa 67's workshop and Scaly Models and everybody else who's been in chat, uh, you know, do feel free to go and watch their content. You need to make sure you're watching Colin's show before mine on a Sunday anyway on Festa 67's workshop, the, the Sunday brunch, because it's hilarious and great fun. Make sure to go and check that out. But uh, I shall uh, hopefully if I'm if I can do the washing up and cooking quickly, I shall see you in the chat for Dad's stream. Unfortunately, it's right when I do the washing up and dinner. So might not be able to make it, but I'll try. Uh, and then tonight, I don't know if it's um, Ted tonight at 9 p.m. or Chris tonight at 8.30 p.m. I'm not sure who's doing the War Hamster Sunday. I can't remember. So I'm sure Dad or Colin will put in uh, in chat who it is. But either way, just make sure you sub to uh, Skipper Scale Models and also to uh, Gross Models anyway. They've got no excuse then. You can't, you can't not watch them. But one of them will be doing it tonight. Or both of them, I don't know. I'm not sure. Anyway going to do so thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves don't forget if you would like to help support this channel please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash model making guru the address is right there or you can become a channel member uh, by pressing the join button underneath any one of my videos either way you'll be supporting the channel directly you'll be keeping this channel alive and making it possible for me to keep doing this nonsense all day every day so thank you very much take care of yourselves go make something awesome i'll just make sure my buttons are working it on Yep. So you've got some new end titles now as well. You've had your new pre-roll. You've had your new going for a wee music. I shall give you the new end titles. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. And until next time. Adios amoebas. Mm -hmm.